want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, P.O. Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Jerry time. Beautiful video from Tom Monroe from his latest disc entitled Tom Monroe on a New Wavelength. And that's a pretty thing called Turning Japanese. <laughs> Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> Japanese. Yes, Turning Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> oh, wow. Jerry Todd. Japanese. Jerry Todd. So, um, hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, Don and Mike. Or you don't know could fill a book. Ain't you right? Boy, what a day I had today. You have, day? you have a day? I had a day. I had a doctor day. I had a. Oh. I had a. A, a doctor. A doctor. A doctor. My doctor. Uh, my doctor. My my son. My wife. <laughs> all of them. I thought you were going to the dentist today. I was supposed to go to the dentist. I'll tell you about that in a second. Oh, oh. Uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, Mr. Drasdale. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Shannon. Hello. Hello there. It's Scott, Michael Scott Shannon and Milburn Drysdale back again with today's fabulous selection of groaners. <laughs> what rap group busts all of its rhymes in Yiddish? What, uh, which one would that be? The Jutang Clan. Oh. Now, don't blame Rob, although it sounds like Rob. Sure he, does. He didn't write these today. <laughs> these are the three completely lame groaners sent to us by the prep service. Well, sounds like Rob Spiewak penned those. He encouraged it. What entertainment magazine publishes, publish, excuse me, publishes the grossest pictures? What magazine, entertainment magazine, publishes the grossest pictures? Pus magazine? Close enough. Pus Weekly. Pus Weekly. <laughs> weekly. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Hello. Hello. Hey, I mean, I'm not proud of that, all right? Go, <laughs> I'm, I'm not proud of that, Rob. Michael Scott Shadow. <laughs> I'm Milburn Drysdale. I'm writing my own groaners. <laughs> what Major League Baseball team has the most problems with indigestion? I don't know. The Milanta my, my, my Abes. Milanta? What? The Milanta Abes. That's uh, bra Braves. Braves. Well, who would I say the Milanta Abes? Abes. The you, Abes. You said the Milanta Abes that have gone to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, that's uh, that's for those uh, are the groaners. Hey now, that's for me. That's my wow. I really got to do good now. <laughs> really got to do good. Now. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. Eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. They're ready to believe. Yeah, see, the thing is, the fun is hard to believe. I don't pre-read those groaners, no. right? So I'm looking. Looking at it going, is it, what is, I know it's a product for indigestion, is it? But my Lanta Brave. Yeah, my Lanta. I my Lanta. My Lanta is like an anti-diarrheal. Yeah, I wasn't sure of the pronunciation. I believe. Anti Perhaps anti-gas, anti, anti, -gas, anti -acid. Yes, all of those. I don't know why I called them the Abe's either. Except that constant fixation I have with Abe Poland. Abe Poland, I know you're a big fan. Abe Poland, Abe Lincoln. Someday. Oh, and hello. 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 He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy, himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. You discretion advised. Oh, Mr. Poland. Okay. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Shaq Artinger and all the ships at sea. Kiss the ring of Don Geronimo uh -huh. and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Robbie. Hello. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you 
four. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. There you go. All right, now we're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Don and Mike show a new episode on this Thursday. It's July 22nd, 20 odd 4 from anywhere in America. Call us toll free at 877 365 3636. In Canada, you cannot use 877, so you must call 800 636 1067. Except for those two guys from yesterday. And Washington, D.C. on WJFK FM, call 202 432 1067. That's your private back door. Very good. Now, back door. That's where I'd like to start today. Really? Back door. Really? Nothing wrong with that. Well, no, listen. Now, here's, Nothing wrong at all. Here's the dilemma that I had today. Really? Uh, you know, I was, I was scheduled to go to the dentist with my wife this morning. Same dentist, same time. She made our appointments, 9.30. Uh -huh. I, was, I mentioned the last day. thing that you talked about before the show was over yesterday. Right. right. I was not exactly looking forward to it. Well, no. I got home last night. and there was, counted the hours. There was the, uh, <laughs> the beep, beep, beep when you pick up the phone, meaning that there's a message. Uh -huh. And it said three messages. And, like, the, you know, once I get past the first one, I goes, Hi, Frida, this is... And then it was, <laughs> save. Hi, Frida, this is... Saved. <laughs> By the time it's third one, it says, hi, and I just didn't, I went, saved. So I didn't listen to the messages. Oh. This morning, about 8.15, uh, they call the do a doctor's office, calls my doctor's office. Uh, my do they say, Dr. Hey, ben Bombay. <laughs> Dr. Bombay calls right. and says, hey, listen, you were uh, scheduled for your, uh, for your appointment, for your prostate check, oh, and you know that this really that you had you had put this off. You can't write this. You had put the. I swear to God, you yeah. had put this. No, off. I know. I mean, you had put this said. off four months ago. Uh -huh. Do you remember? And you said that today was the day. We called and left you a message yesterday to confirm. I'm calling to confirm your appointment this morning, roughly 15 minutes after my uh, uh, the, the, the dentist appointment. I had the dentist appointment oh. at 9:30, and I had the. The, the other appointment at 9.45. Yeah, you so, don't want those two doctors sharing instruments. <laughs> so I was, I, I was uptight already because I, yeah, I didn't want to drive to the dentist with my wife and go to the dentist and go through, go through, the, known. Going, going through the lecture on the way home about how, you know, I'm sure whatever's wrong with my teeth and how perfect hers are. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey Dr. Prostate, hold this drill for a second. <laughs> so we ended up, uh, sadly, uh, having to go our separate ways to our, to our doctors. Uh, although you'll be glad to know we still had quality time together. Yeah, but going your separate ways had to be tough. Yeah, oh, it, it was my It always is separate, going separate ways. Yeah. Uh, so we, we had a, a wonderful uh, commute together in the rush hour traffic. I took her to pick up her car, which she broke the other day, and <laughs> and it's it's fine now. And it, well, she didn't break it, and no. it, but the car broke. And yeah. so we, I dropped her off, and then she was la la off to the dentist, and <laughs> and I was off to the doctor's office, and. Don't get what I'm talking about mistaken with when you get the the ch the you know the the thing going up there with the oh, camera. Oh, that's what I thought it was. No, this, oh, no, no, this no. Was I mean, not, I thought it was iron and finger. No, no, yeah, this is not a colonoscopy. Ah. Which I well, which I know, I, I know what a prostate exam is too. Okay, yeah. well, just for those who didn't know, I mean, because I think maybe six or seven months ago I had the colonoscopy and talked about right. It. Uh -huh. This is an entirely different procedure. This is where you go into the doctor's office and you say hi and you fill out the forms and then you go to a room and they take they. they you take your blood pressure, and then then the woman says, "Please take off all of your clothes. The doctor will be right with you." <laughs> and that's the one. That's the, the the prostate exam would be the famous exam in in, in, in comedy movies. Now, made most famous by Chevy Chase. Now I was not looking forward to going to the dentist. No. I was not looking forward to going to the dentist with my wife. No, no offense to my wife. Uh, you know, no, no, no offense uh, to, to anybody. As Frida, so it's uh, yeah, my wife Frida is built herself to say no offense intended. I just no disrespect. I don't like going to the dentist anyway. I, I flip out about it. So that was bad. But then when I figured out, oh God, I, and I can't postpone this the the prostate because as she says to me. You're forty. You're you're forty five. You're going to be forty six in, in in a couple of months. You really should have had this done when you were here three months ago. When you said you you promised you would come in the next time to have this done. Really? It's, well, it's it's a regular thing you should have done. I guess like every three years or something like that. Starting now. Like that. I, I guess so. I uh -huh. Every two weeks. Well, now I got to get my. I got to ask my. Have you had one, Buzz? I, uh, not recently. No, well, I haven't had one. Well, anyway, I, you know, and maybe it's got to do with my mixed-up insides, but I urge you all to. That was the doctor's message. Mm -hmm. You know, and we worked out a Go little... Go out and get it done. We worked out a little deal today on this, yeah. uh, because he was rather cool. Uh, I was uncomfortable as hell when she said, take off all your clothes and just let... And not the option like, here, put this gown on. Mm -hmm. it, she oh, just, just stand there bare-butt naked? 
Take take your clothes off. That's unusual. So I took my clothes off. <laughs> I, she, I wish we had the saxophone. She, closed, <laughs> she closed the uh, door. Wait a minute. I I just want to oh. see. I want to make sure because this doesn't sound normal. Legit. <laughs> she. Th this is. <laughs> no, hold on. I'm going somewhere with this. Bear the with woman. Me. The woman asked you to take off your clothes. Yes. The, and a uh, mildly attractive woman uh, in her mid to late forties. Isn't, isn't the there parking lot? What? And this was in the parking lot? No, no, they, no. they bring me into the examination room. Isn't there supposed to be a male doctor there when this happens? Mike, slow down. Okay. <laughs> the lady... You know me, I get curious. The nurse who brought me back into the examination room took my blood pressure, then said... Hi, baby. Now, <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> Take your clothes off. Uh -huh. And the doctor will be in. Okay, so and but but no ground was given to you or anything no, no. like that. Now this is why I'm a dope, and and there's I, I, this is going to be a long running thread throughout today's show about <laughs> what an idiot I am. Okay, because I sit there now for the next ten agonizing minutes, and I know it because there's a big clock right there, naked. <laughs> I am just wow. sitting naked in an examination room. You're used to that. And at one point. The door actually opens, ah. and I say, uh, I don't have anything on. <laughs> but what are you going to say, right? Yeah, she right. told you to take all of your clothes off. Now, as it turns out, it was the doctor that was opening the door, and the doctor, I hear from outside the door, I hear, well, I don't, I don't want to see you like that. Put the gown on. And I said, I don't see any gown. And he said, look at the door. Do you see it on the back of the door? And sure enough, gigantic, big, right? As as you shut, there's no way that I could have sat in that room for ten minutes and not seen hanging on the door your gown, the gown with the little bins next to it. I put my clothes in the little bins oh. right next to the place where the gown was hanging, but I was so uptight about the process uh -huh. that I didn't picture even... you sitting on the table. Uh, I sat actually, Mike, on a metal stool. I'm not, I'm not kidding. On a money metal stool. That's the one. Naked. That, that's the one that they're moving around with a stick now. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that probably wasn't necessary. No, I, I guarantee it wasn't. And I know you, you prepped for the biggest. Because you know, you know how you you, yeah. you brush your teeth like eight yeah. million times the night before you go to the dentist. Right. Yeah. Trust me. As soon as I found this out this morning, when I when I realized that I and I already showered, when I realized I was not going to the dentist, I was having this done, I went back up and re-showered again. Yeah, yeah, you did your impression probably of uh, that uh, your favorite reality TV host. Who's that? Jeff Probst. <laughs> so anyway, you, you know, the door opens and I say, hey, what's going on? I'm naked. And, yeah. Hi, baby. And he, he says, you know, it's behind, right there. Isn't there a gown right uh, on the hook, right by where you put your clothes? And then, if you really oh. wanted to have fun with him, you'd look at you, you know, be behind the door, you'd yell to him, no, that's not necessary. So, now I feel like a dope again, because there it is. So what I do is I grab it and throw it on. It's one of those jobbers where you, it ties in the back, like at your right, neck, right. and also around your waist. And he was waiting to come into the room, so I just opened the door and... Turned around and we, as we walked in, he shut the door and I, I said, "Where, where do you want me?" He said, uh, "What I'd like you to do is just hop up on the table." Mm -hmm. And at that point, when I went to hop up, on, <laughs> hop up on this table like a small puppy, when I went to hop up <laughs> on the table, uh -huh. he said to me, "This is his first smart ass comment." He said, <laughs> "You realize that there are ties on the back of that thing you have on, you know, but, but because I was in such a rush to throw this thing on, sure. I didn't tie the back, and apparently when he told me to hop up on this table... Uh, he's thinking now that you want him to see your body. He got a, he got a less than flattering view, so he says to me, you know, smart ass, like the doctor says, you know, there are ties on the back. I said, listen, I, trust me, I don't want this, I don't want this procedure done. I don't want to be here, I don't want to be naked. Uh -huh. He said... <laughs> Did you, you climb up on the table like a cocker spaniel or something like that? No. He said, here's what we need to do. And he was very cool. He said, there, a lot of guys are uncomfortable with this. Of course. He said, everything looks great, all of the, the blood work, and you, 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 all my cholesterol, all that stuff, everything good. Here's what you do. Uh, step down from the table. Uh -huh. Take a moment. Compose, your, compose yourself. Uh -huh. Tie the string around, like you know, like you would say to a retarded person. Right. <laughs> Take a moment. Tie the string around the back, uh -huh. and then tie the string around your neck. So I'm standing there like a retard, going, uh huh. 
So, it's not easy to do that, is it? So how's everything going? And, and he realizes this, and he says, now, I could help you, but that may make you feel uncomfortable. So do you want to... I said, no, you know, you're right. I'd rather just... Mm -hmm. So the first one I got done on a nice bow knot, the one for my back. Right. And then when it came time to tie the one around my neck, I'm lucky I didn't just kill myself because I ended up just tying like double and triple knots. <laughs> and I said, All right, that's it. I'm ready. Right. I'm ready. He said, now, the exam that I have to do is going to be very brief. And most likely everything is fine. Uh, but unfortunately, there's only one way that we really know what's going on. Right. And at that point, here comes Mr. Glove. And and he's also got thanks thanks for the help of the sound effects. He's also got the crystal. He's got, he? Yeah, he's got the uh, the jar, <laughs> and I, I'm just looking at him, going, "You sucker!" <laughs> you know, I mean, you sap. This is how you're making the earth. Like, you <laughs> you bastard. And See, he doesn't even think of it as anything. No, and and he knows that I'm uncomfortable. So he says, "Let's make a deal." He said, uh, "You need to have this done." This is how I'm making my living. I save people lives lives by doing this. Mm -hmm. It's really not that bad. Let's just get through it. Right. I tell you what. If I'm not done, totally done, within five minutes, you can trash five. me on... Five minutes? No, no, no. Five minutes? Meaning, meaning, no, no, no. Meaning from start time from when he came in the room and told me to tie everything. Uh -huh. So he's got two and a half minutes left. Okay. He's looking at the clock and he says, you gave me five minutes. I've already been in the room. But my question is this. How long is he going to be there? Okay, here's what he's saying. Uh -huh. It's simply up and look around goodbye. Right. right. So he's, what he's saying to me, he's trying to assuade my fear by saying... I'd be done in less than five right. minutes. Okay. And, I, and I had the same thought. I said, well, ah. What do you need five minutes for? He said, I've already taken up Two minutes and 30 seconds of the appointment time, mm -hmm. helping you get your gown tied. He said, I can be done now if you want it in real time. He said, I can be done with everything probably in 90 seconds. If we could just stop talking, and if you would just... See, if, if, a guy, if he gives me that time frame, I'm freaked out. Yeah, yeah but he was, he but was I trying... It now. He's trying to call me... What he's trying to say is, listen, the whole... The whole You're process, visibly uptight. Yeah, the whole process from him walking in the door to when he leaves, he, what he's saying is, it's going to be less than five minutes. The whole visit, yeah. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now the clock's going, and we're, I'm, I'm already <laughs> into my third minute. And keep in mind, I've been sitting there naked for ten minutes before this. I always think of that as like a real quickie. It is. And, and as it turns out, it is. So he says to me... This is going to take about ten minutes. No. <laughs> he says to me, now I'd like you to turn. You're still uptight about it. I'm like, of course I am. I violated today. <laughs> so I'd like you to turn, you know, uh -huh. you know, spread now, okay? And here we go. And I went, oh, <laughs> Christ. Uh -huh. He said, and that's it. <laughs> and I, and I, now we're dancing. And I went, oh, what? He said... That's it. About ten seconds. Everything's fine. Right. He said, and look, <laughs> I've only been in the office four minutes and 20 seconds because there's a gigantic a clock. Man of, a doctor of, of his word. Well, mm -hmm. He said, and it would have been quicker if you hadn't been fooling around with your, and he called it, <laughs> with around. your dress. <laughs> How funny is that? Like, he sounds like a hip guy. He's a very cool guy. Yeah. And it would have been so long if you hadn't waited so long with your dress. <laughs> with your dress. I said, okay. All right. So that's it. It's, you know, it's a simple yeah. little la la, go up and see what's happening, but right. uncomfortable. Did he do what? Uh, did he do the normal post thing? Now you know every doctor does it differently. What, what are you speaking about? The cuddling. <laughs> oh, the cuddling. There is no. There is no uh, cuddling. <laughs> just swam back. Well, no, I cried a lot though. <laughs> <laughs> he stroked your. He stroked your hair with his hand. Cried, cried like a little girl. It's okay. Cried like a little girl. <laughs> be okay. Yes. So then, I'm it done. Is, I have never heard you tell a story where I have pictured you more in that. <laughs> sitting there. The one that kills me is even before the dress. When you're just sitting on a stool. <laughs> naked. Ten minutes. Waiting. Naked. I was, looking at a, I was looking at a picture of the Olsen twins <laughs> on a like, three-week-old cover of People magazine. Oh, God. You know, the choices you have in those offices are very limited. Is this a general get. practitioner or a proctologist that you went to? G uh, GP. GP. A, Your regular guy. Yeah, one of the regular guys. One, one of the thousands that prop me up and keep me in here. Very good. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what? They do good work. So that, you know, that was... Good work.
That was it. It was all of that build up for And it, no yeah. dentist for you today, so now you still have that to look forward to. Yeah, but now, see, but now, uh, here you go. Uh, t- take that frown and turn it upside down. Now, relatively speaking, yeah. the dentist will be a walk, in, no the, a walk in the park. Absolutely. Because I know I'm not going to have to get naked there. <laughs> if you do run. And then, you know, on the way out, because I'm a good-natured sort, right. I took as good-naturedly as I could the kidding on the way out because, uh, you know, he gets done and he says, all right, now put your clothes back on and then wait for, you know, Becky Lynn or whatever her name is to come on back and she'll give you the paperwork to get uh-huh. you out of here. So I get dressed and, and then, I, then I hear, I go, yeah, come on in. She, and she comes in she goes, now don't tell me that you really didn't know that that gown was right there. And I said... You never said anything about it to me. She said, you're in a room that's eight feet by four feet. <laughs> there's an examining table. She's laughing while she's saying this. There's the stool. There's the magazine. And right there when the door shuts is the gown. Right. You know, and I'm just saying, okay, okay, pal. I think it's very cool that he said that I hope you, you know, if you're not comfortable, I'll, I'll help you. But if you're uncomfortable, yeah, yeah I like that. That's I'll smart. I'll help you. So... <laughs> I'll help you. So then, uh, by the time I got out to, you know, once they laugh at the insurance card that says Viacom on it. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's when we... Oh, we don't. <laughs> we don't take this. This isn't real. Uh, because there was uh, some moment... You know, have you guys know, noticed that now that we have two or three separate different cards oh, now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It used to be that there was one that you used for everything, and now there's one for, like, I didn't need one any for meds. Prescriptions but I didn't, one, I didn't yeah. I give her that card, and she says, no, this no, is, like, for medication. Card. I said, okay, well, hold on. What about this one? No, this is for uh, something else. I said, what, what about so finally the third one? Uh-huh. And because I'm wasting more time finding the card, <laughs> the story about me is getting back. And now, now the doctor is coming back, and he's telling the nurses. Uh-huh. I'm guessing what's happening because one by one, and he's one of these guys that's got a harem. Uh-huh. He's got like right. it's like one man doctor and fifty broads. Yeah. Really? Is yeah. he? Uh... Uh, is he like a uh, a good looking doctor? Um, I would rather not say, Mike. I've I've been intimate with him. <laughs> I'd rather not. How about his age? His age? Yeah. How old is he? He felt about forty. <laughs> <laughs> Tell <laughs> to be a man about 40. That's what he felt like. Oh, God, I'm going to have an aneurysm myself here. <laughs> he yep. felt about 40. He did. So, uh, you can always tell. <laughs> I'd say in the, in the 40s. Experience. Early 40s. <laughs> uh, <laughs> made, way, made my way out, and the, the story was getting to everybody, you know, on the way. And, and apparently, what they all loved was the fact that, you know, you sat there naked for 10 minutes. Yes, I did. And they all love saying to me, you know, I almost walked in there just to make sure you were doing okay to say hello. And, you know, what if I had walked in and you were just naked as a jaybird? You know, okay. Well. Just the way you are tonight. So wow. that's so that's the story of why I didn't go to the dentist. I ended up going to the other doctor. Well, you got a clean bill of health. Huh? I do it. And, uh, Good for you. And everybody do that. You know, yeah. come on. Get the prostate exam. That's right. Avoid the cancer. I ha- had a full physical and they didn't do that with me. Uh a lot of times they don't, which is why uh, when I had a full physical the last time... And I sure as hell wasn't going to grab him around the ankles and drag him. When back I had a room. full physical the last time, one of the things that... It was a different doctor, but the doctor said, Now, you're due for a prostate. And I said, whoa, whoa, you know, can we hold off on that? Yeah, sure. You know, next time through. Next time through. I thought it was older guys. That no rush. Do that. No yeah, rush. They've started pushing the prostate exams again because they're finding out the blood tests are not 100% reliable, so you're going to be feeling more of that. Okay. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. And as as my guy loves saying, you know, this is really the only way. Yeah. You know, real proud of that. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that there would be some other way, but no, this is, he gleefully puts the glove on. I think on. all things considered, it's much more difficult for him than you. Oh, don't you think I know it? Uh, don't you I mean really? I mean, don't you know, think I know it? And I was yeah, only, I, I was so. only, I was only the first of, God knows how, how many. Sure. Today for that guy, he that probably has to be sucker. Term when a patient says, "Can you do that again?" Yeah, <laughs> they've asked me to stop <laughs> calling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's, you know, it is a universal comedy. Uh, but it's one of those things. If you're that current, doctor, if you're that doctor. Imagine you wake up in the morning and you feel pretty good about yourself. You went to medical school. You're driving a nice Beamer or whatever it is. You got a nice house frau. You got everything going. You're looking at your schedule and you go, oh. <sighs> 
Got to do that at 10 a.m., 10.20 a.m., 10.50 a.m., 10.30 a.m., you know, 11.30. Then lunch. 12.50, right? Then lunch. You know, thinking about it, you know, you're going to be with 20 different butts all day. Yeah. Like, like that's your job, being with 20 butts. But on your end, and pardon the pun, on your end, uh, you know, you got to spend the rest of the afternoon feeling like you're sitting on a jellyfish. Oh. <laughs> well, are you speaking from personal experience? Because I, I have one a long time. I don't ago. feel like I'm uh, sitting on a jellyfish, Mike. I feel like there are uh, nails that are, that are being pounded. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> no, it's all psychological. Yeah, it is. I just don't, that whole thing because they have to do what they do. I I'm not fond of that. It's all psychological. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello there. Hello there. Hey, Dan, I, I just want to let you know, you know, before you feel all special about yourself, to that doctor, you're really just another face in the crowd. <laughs> oh, one of the beautiful faces, no yeah. doubt, but yes, absolutely. I would imagine that most doctors do get to a point where that is just routine. Yeah. I guess so. Oh, I mean, if it's not, then, then yeah, you've got a problem. There's cause for you've concern. Got a, you, listen, if it's anything but repulsing at right. best, there's a problem. <laughs> if there's any level of comfort. Well, no, see, I don't think, it, I think, I think for doctors, it's probably not repulsive. Yeah, but if there's but it's also not anything that but, but they hold get on. excited about. It's, it's, but it's like a, a CSI person who would see someone's brains being blown out on the sidewalk. You know, I seem to remember years ago when I might have had one of those pro procedures, done, and, the, and the doctor said, you know, he, he just, you know, they don't dig it. No, I don't think they dig it at I've all. I've heard that. We, yeah, yeah. No. They, I mean, most doctors really don't. Enjoy I, I that. can't imagine. That's why. That's what I'm just saying. Right. Can you imagine? You've got a good life. You're a doctor. You went to med school. Right. You've, you've done everything right. Then you look into your list of what you got. 20 guys with the last name of butt. Yeah, you can't. That, you gotta your, go to work. That's your, that's your job. Ten, ten seconds. And God forbid the, the glove rips. Oh. Tonight, I will be dreaming of bowling pins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, remember that tape we had from, yeah. from ER? <laughs> okay. Bowling trophy. Bowling that's trophy. Right. Oh, yeah, it was not a bowling pin. <laughs> yeah. It was a bowling, bowling trophy. Bowling trophy. Same, you know, dimensions, I would imagine. Same idea, yeah. But, you know, maybe my doctor was a little different because, you know, there's a saying that, that I I know I've made it before, and, and he said, he felt while, 40. While, while we were in the midst of the actual checking of the prostate, yeah. he said, remember my motto, <laughs> love what you do and never work a day in your life. <laughs> Yippee. <laughs> it's a joy to come to work. Yeah. Suddenly it hurt. As he, was, <laughs> as he was down there looking into the eighth wonder of the world. Did you do what I always do after those? What? Did you ask to keep the glove? <laughs> As a souvenir. Yuck. You know how Yuck. people, some people will hang the, uh, <laughs> the graduation tassel? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hope that's a well-ventilated room. <laughs> yeah, we know where that guy's been today. Now, having said all of that... Yes. Uh, listen to this. I'm not the most disgusting member of my family. No. Uh, my kid is. Uh, two separate... Uh, one thing that's nothing, the other thing, which you can say that he got it for me. I'll just tell you. First, he also... We are a family of doctors today. Uh, my wife with the dentist, me with the double booked on the appointments. Right. And my kid's got to go to the doctor for uh, his uh, shoulder, which is uh, popped Pat, out of... Right, a, a, bum, a bum shoulder. Right, there of surgery. Right. So he's got to go to... It. He, but today he was going to go see the regular ah. doctor. So... It's not a problem getting him up now. You know, he used Good. to sleep till 2 in the afternoon. Now, you know, if he sleeps in, he sleeps until 10.30. Mm -hmm. You know, that's cool. He's turned, turned his sleep cycles around. Get him up. Say, hey, come on. Got to go to the doctor. He says, okay, I'm going to the doctor. Rolls out of bed. I don't bother to mention. It might be nice to, you know, bathe or perhaps think about brushing your teeth. Yeah. I don't say it to him because this is his life. So, so he leaves and he goes to the doctor. He calls me on the way home to tell me what the doctor said, that he has to keep doing these exercises or whatever. And he says, I'll be home in a couple of seconds. I say, okay, I'll see you then. He comes, he comes through the door. I say, so what are your plans today? And he says, well, I think uh, I'm going to see some friends this afternoon. I'm going to go down to Bethesda. I definitely go take a shower, though, before I see my friends. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. Now, no matter what age you are, right? If you're going to go see a doctor, and now he was not going to go see a doctor like I was going to see a doctor, or like my wife was, like Fred went to a dentist. Right, right. He's going to go see uh, a, 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 a guy that works on uh, uh, arms and, and legs, one of these guys, okay? What do you, what do you call these doctors? The, uh, orthopod. Um, orthopedics. Yeah, okay. uh, right, an orthopedic, an orthopedic surgeon. An orthopod. Yeah. All he's going to have to do is take his shirt off. But still... I mean, he's he's got like that layer of kid cheese on him. Because well, and it's right. now it's man 
Yeah, thing. yeah, right, yeah, because he's, he's... I mean, you don't take a shower in the morning and go to a doctor. I would never go to a doctor without doing He's 19 and a half, and, uh-huh. and I tried to mention that to him, and he just said he gave me some of the, you know, know-it-all stuff. And then, <laughs> this is maybe my proudest moment as a parent. <laughs> uh, he says, okay, Dad, I'm leaving. I'll see you tonight. I said, okay, I'll see you later. And he gets in his car. Now... He gets in his car and he turns up the music loud, which which he always does. And he's listening to uh, some hip hop uh, CD. Right. Uh, who is it, Robbie? You gave oh, it to him. Oh God, I don't even know. It's I don't whoever it is. It's somebody, it, it, but it's loud. <laughs> and I'm hearing this because I'm I'm in my house and I'm hearing the, like the boombox sound. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I walk out onto the deck, and from uh, my house you can look around and see uh, over by the front door. Who is it, Rob? It was Eric, Eric B. and Rakim. Eric B. and Rakim. Oh yeah. So he's got his car going with the music. <laughs> he's got his car going with the with the music real loud. Right. And he's like supposed to have left five minutes ago. And I hear this inside when I'm watching TV. So I I go out on the deck. He is standing on my front porch taking a leak. <laughs> on the front porch. On the front porch. <laughs> this is my front. 19 and a half year old son is about to start his sophomore year at at at, at a major university. <laughs> And, and the now, front porch, but and, the, the, now the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. On but now, hold, Mike, hold on. <laughs> well, you go I, the back. off the back in right. the deck in the backyard. Hello, in the backyard. Everybody yes. knows. Backyard. And here's the worst thing: as you walk out my front door, there's the driveway straight down. Now that, of course, is not where he's where he's aiming. Although no. he's standing right on the front porch, he turns directly to his right. Meaning, as I peer around the corner from the deck, because it's kind of a wraparound deck, mm-hmm. I see my kid <laughs> holding his, and he's, I see him going. <laughs> and I said, hey, hey, <laughs> wait, what are you doing, you moron? You had a and, day. And he said, he said, I'm going to the bathroom. I said, don't go to the bathroom in front of the, that you're in the front yard. <laughs> You know, not to mention the fact that <laughs> there is a bathroom roughly eight yards away. Yeah. Oh. The bathroom now it's the kitchen bathroom. No one's ever allowed to go number two in there, but you can use it in a in a. You know, my wife will let people use it to go number one. Yeah. Right. About eight yards. Eight yards away. And his response to me, of it's, course, it's a labor-saving move. Because yeah, and because he's the know-it-all, as he's zipping up, and I said, to him, I said, Bart, really, sometimes you're disgusting. He said. Will you do it? I said, wait, hold on. First, yes, I do go to the bathroom off the deck. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, I do. Now, see, now, wait a minute. I'm going to stop you here because you got, this is a tough argument for you to make. I, now, back or front, me, you, you know, when, when, right there when he says you do it, that's, that's tough. Okay. It's, it's tough to come back on that one. Uh-huh. He would not have known about it. Well, maybe he's seen me do it a couple of times, but generally he knows about it because I've talked about it on the radio. But you, you know, know what? Isn't it the great privilege of being a man? Yes, yes it is, and yes. I and I don't find any fault with that. Don't most men have a primal however, desire to however, do that? However, Mike, he was like stepping. When, I, I'm with you. Here's when a mailman comes. Here's my friend. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with Don. I am with you all the way. What I'm front saying is. Front door, three feet away, turns to the right. Hello, London. Hello, France. Right. Here go my underpants. Oh, <laughs> hi, Dad. But as soon as he, as soon as you give him, Jesus. as soon as you bust him on it, he can come back to you with you, you do it. Because well, if, you're, if you're being technical about it. I do, and my answer to that was, I don't do it on the front porch. Right. I did it, and, uh, my, you know, God rest his soul, my dad did it. Mm-hmm. And you know, on it's the front not porch. on the front no, no, porch. No, 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 no. That was my point. It was him. discreetly, right? It was very. It was a one area. Well, that's Dad's point. Side mm-hmm. of the house where discreet. nobody could see anything. And that, Mike, and that's where I do it, which is why it's not a valid argument when he says you do it. No, you know because, what? You're right. Because the difference is, I don't, <laughs> I don't open our front door. I mean, take. I'm not kidding you. Three steps. Turn and take a leak. His his immediate comeback to you is legit because, of course, you do outside, but. The idea, you know, there are degrees of everything. And doing it, you know, I know your house. I know how your house is laid out. No. And very I, wrong and very bad. I said to him, you know, what if the UPS guy? Or one of your neighbor ladies. Yeah, right. Yeah. Coming, you know, popping up the street. Hi. Hello. How are you? What if Bunny still lived on our street? Yeah. We're, to say nothing of. I would have shocked Bunny. To say nothing of. Uh, you know, the, the shrubs that you have in front of it. You have some very nice landscaping back there. That'll for goodness sakes. Die. 
What if mommy was was <laughs> up the driveway? I mean, yeah. it's awful enough for a father your, to see that. I think your wife would be a little upset. It's awful enough for a father to see that. I would. Oh God, God, no, no, no. So that's uh, <laughs> that's that. Um, I'm also very curious as to what I'm going to be doing tomorrow night. I know you're excited. Uh, well, I, I am, but now, much like the doctor and the dentist, I, I was, ex I, you know, I say yes. Uh, uh, we were graciously invited to a party tomorrow night uh, by Art Modell and Patty Modell, the former owners of the Baltimore Ravens and the, and the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. Party for David Modell, who just got married to Michelle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's why I feel weird about this. Uh, because I am, uh, I, I feel like a monkey. I, I feel like uh, I know these people. They're nice people. I've socialized with them a couple of times. Uh, but I've screwed up an awful lot already on this party. For instance, they sent us way back in, like, the end of May, they sent us one of those save-the-date cards saying, uh -huh. you know, we're going to have... A, right. Yeah, this is an exclusive, private, snobby party, okay? So, you know, I'm trying to fit into the snob world. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to join to go to this... It's fun to, you know, you know dip your feet in the it's water. It's a fancy with party with a lot of football people, yeah. a lot of nice people. water with your toe. So... Uh, I, I, I see we get the card, and when I get the card, I even call Rob up. It was on a Saturday. I called Rob, and I said, hey, you want to know something funny? I just got a letter from Art Modell inviting me to a party. Right. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then a couple weeks later, we get the invitation. Mm -hmm. And Frida says, did you say we got the invitation to David and Michelle's party? I said, yes, I did. And she said, okay. And then I guess she's, she maintained that she said to me, would you RSVP? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I, of course, did not. Uh, Beth Ann had been working here. I don't know, like two weeks or something, she came to me during a commercial and she said, do you know somebody named Michelle, Michelle Modell? And I said, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, and she said, well, they're having a party and they really wanted to know if you were coming because you never RSVP'd. Mm -hmm. So, you know, ugh, I called Frida and I said, how come you didn't RSVP to that party? And she said, I told you to RSVP to the party and you said you would do it. You know, just another thing that I have to. So, so they already think that I'm an idiot. Well, last night I'm looking, when I get home, I'm looking at the invitation, and I see, yes, indeed, it, it, it's very little, small print on the bottom, it says, black tie. Now, I don't have a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. I call the I call the place and I say uh, I need to rent a tuxedo, like, a ASAP. We had more, like, functions for tuxedos 15 years ago than right, we do now. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I call a couple of places and they say, I'm sorry. You know, you, you, it's the weekend, dude. They're like the wedding parties and. Yeah, that time and, of year. And, you know, I don't know if we can get you a. So, yeah. so I'm, now I'm, then I'm thinking, God, I'm going to go to this thing like what, wearing a seersucker suit. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to stand out enough like a sore thumb. <laughs> right. Like what the, what the F am I doing at a party black with jeans the, and a leather black jacket with, <laughs> with the mode down, and you know I, it's a party that I believe BB will be at really you know, you know Brian Billick sure the professor right I gotta think there'll be some football people there the the Modell family will be there I've enjoyed being in their company I'm I'm a big suck up when they're around because there's a lot of big NFL history there but I'm wondering what am I what am I doing being invited there and now because I have to have a touch here's what I've come up with we did find a place that had one. Okay. It's, it's being picked up by Joe tomorrow at, tw at 12 noon. Wow. There's no good that can come of this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be dressing in the office before the show tomorrow in the tuxedo that I hope fits. Very exciting. To go to this thing tomorrow night of which I really can't figure out why I'm... Uh, going unless did you go large as opposed to small. Did you mm. did you did you did you dress not the way you would do if you were like getting it tailored? But you, you always got to yeah, go. Yeah, I went I went a little bigger than I should. Like the, I know my waist. I know my waist. I'm a 38. There's no problem with that. I'm a 38, 32 in my pants. Tuxedo pants have the little yeah. They got the, the pants are fine. Be okay. And besides, blue is your color. <laughs> You're gonna wear the Dumb and Dumber tuxedo. Hawaiian blue, yes. Powder blue. <laughs> yes, with the Hawaiian powder blue with the with the uh, with the tuxedo hat. Someday I do hope there's a function you and I can attend where we can wear those tuxedos. So with, with the top hats and the canes. I'm, I'm now thinking, you know, that, that I've said all of this on the radio today about what I've done today, and now you're I, going with a black tie, right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it's black. Well, that's what the invitation says. Well, I mean, I know black, black tie, tie, but do you know how you know so many people wear different? No, no. I'm just, yeah. I just want like whatever it is that when you see the the, the picture of the guy of a guy yeah. in a tuxedo, just standard. Just give me that. That's all I need. Orange. Uh, but, but I'm just. I'm. I'm. Here's here's my thought process on this. Right. It's like what thought process. It's, <laughs> it's like they wanted 
Jay Leno. And they couldn't get Jay Leno. So then they thought, well, what, what, what about Letterman? No. And then they went all the way down, and even Craig Kilborn said no. <laughs> so then finally, like somebody said, oh, what about Jimmy Kimmel? You know, this is how I feel. How about Denise Coates? Yeah, okay. Well, I was thinking on a national, grand national scale. <laughs> you were thinking on a, on a Baltimore yes, scale. Yes, of course. Yeah, right. Thank you. Rob's got the best one. It's like, when they're going down their list of whoever they're going to invite from the media to this party, I'm positive that my name is somewhere underneath Marty Bass from Ch <laughs> <laughs> Channel 13. Marty Bass. Marty Bass there. So, you know. Well, don't go in with that attitude. You, you go in with a, that, that you're, you know, you, these people are not better than you. No, and, and they certainly don't present themselves as such. But I know that I, you're excited. Yeah, of course I am. And I feel like a, a fish out of water, and it's tomorrow, and at this time tomorrow I'll be wearing a tuxedo while we're doing the show. And You've always gotten along famously with Patty. Have you not kissed her on the cheek? <laughs> ah. Yes, I have kissed <laughs> Mrs. Modell more than one time on the cheek. Are you going to accessorize? Uh, yes, I am. Chaps? Uh, <laughs> butlers. Yeah. Butlers. Yeah. No one will know also, until it gets a little hot. Also a rental. <laughs> so anyway, oh, thanks. Bro. Thank you, Rob, for helping me out on that one. No problem. Because I was like a, a double stupid because I forgot the RSVP to this party, which is tomorrow night. Well, you never know. You know, I mean, you're, you're invited and you never know. Who's going to be on that guest list? I mean, I know. you know, you're going to be there, and you know, the models are going to be there, but who knows who will be on the guest list? Well, what are they going to say? What are they going to say mm -hmm. about me? If it's right. black tie, there are going to be a lot of people there, so it should be a pretty interesting. Just Maybe you'll be glad doing you're some, there. Uh, some celebrity watching. And what are they going to do? Is it, hi, uh, listen, uh, so and so, uh, 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 Pete Rosell, uh, 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 Paul Tagliabue. If it's Pete Rosell, they'll have to bring a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making up any name, you know. Right. Joe Blow, please say hello to. To Don, uh, he does a radio show. Perhaps you heard yesterday. He did the better part of an hour talking about going to the proctologist. <laughs> you know, this is where I feel I'm not really sure. going to fit in. It's not my social circle. I think you're going to have a great time. I can't wait to hear who uh, the celebrities are, are um, going to be at this party. And you know, or is it an intimate gathering? I do. I do not know. Hmm. And I, I heard a rumor about the models. I don't know whether it's true. Well, or not. What was the rumor? Well, it's black tie, and they, yeah. they like to have black tie parties. You seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I should get one of those Mardi Gras type masks. Have yeah. a mask. Yes, you should go in costume. <laughs> mask on a stick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, let's break here, shall we? Sure, Roselle. <laughs> the invitation clearly said black tie and rubber gloves. <laughs> hey, meanwhile, if it was Pete Roselle, it'd be like a skeleton at the door. <laughs> Mr. Roselle, black tie. Answer me! <laughs> 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 Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> hey, Pete's here. <laughs> Sit him down over there. You see, now, a comment like that is the type of thing that would piss off someone like Art Modell. I know. Who's probably friends with the... Probably. I'm sure he was friends with the yeah, little Pete Rose. Yeah, of course he was. And once yeah. again, now he's going to say, it was, and this is the dope you've invited to the party? I know. The dope that incidentally didn't even know to put on the gown <laughs> when he was waiting naked? <laughs> and the guy that's going to have the rented tux that's going to be arriving to his radio show roughly, <laughs> roughly five hours before the freaking party of which he was invited to two months ago but didn't even call to say he was coming oh dear and he's coming up the driveway there's that chimp in the tux rental <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got a break we'll be right back everybody this is the don and mike show well, you know based upon what you told me before about the attacks i'd say that that was probably it then what's your stress just stress Stress is a very powerful force. I doubt if there's anything physically wrong with you. That's it? That's it. That's it. I think so. You. No. No. You. You're very good, you. No. You are very good. There's you. a lot more to it than that. You're very good, you. There are underlying things. You understand you me? No, you're right. You're right on the no. money. Never thought I'd hear another man say to me. That sucks. <laughs> you are my shrink. Oh, no. No, no, no. I couldn't. Mr. V, you're not. You're not ready for this. You, you're not ready to open up. You're not a good candidate. Listen to you. What? The f***ing honesty. God. That's it. You don't understand. Well, nobody. We nobody beat that one out. talks to me like that. You understand? You understand? Yes, I do. That's it. Let's do it. I'm ready. You don't hear the word no very often, do you? I hear it all the time when it's more like, no, please, no, no. It's not in my show. That would be the first time, I think, 
I've ever had to take one of our tapes that we played. Yes, and uh, it was from the old days. Right, and, and dump out part of it. Working delightfully non-blue, so Don giant. Geronimo and Michael Mera. At the Sorry Affiliate Stations, uh, <laughs> a computer problem brought us back uh, about 10 seconds late on the network. Sorry about that. Um, before we get to the pickle people... Uh, J Dubs, would you come in here just for a second? <laughs> a little behind the scenes now. Uh, you know, J Dubs works on the late night show on WJFK, The Hideout. All right. Did he get it? Did he get it done? Oh, he did. He, did. he showed me earlier, and I wanted him to come and show you, Mike. It is beautiful in color. J Dubs, would you tell everybody what it says on your bicep? <laughs> it says uh, Detroit Lions has a logo underneath, and underneath that it says Super Bowl Champions 2005. And I mean, it's a big ass tattoo of that big logo that they have on their helmets. It's well done. <laughs> you got the 2005. It's going to be hard to change that date. That is really going to be hard to mess with. With the way they did the font on the uh, date, that's not a very easily alterable font. Yeah, Dubs. I think your your best chance will be maybe changing it to a six. Boy, but that's a sharp, hard five. Mm -hmm. And you know me, Mr. Glass Half Full. I will say that in the event. By some miracle uh -oh. that Detroit uh, achieves the, this, this, uh, in you, you will be a god. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah, I'll be nice to Detroit Damas. <laughs> he's, he's so Scooby Doo. Oh, he is Scooby Doo, man. He is, and that is, I mean, that is a tattoo that's going to be difficult now, to Dubs, alter. I appreciate the fact that you're a diehard Lions fan. Say, dude, check out my socks. See, got my lucky Packer socks. You, you wearing your Packer yeah. socks every today? day? Every day, wear some Packer socks. Even tomorrow night, let the thing. Well, no, tomorrow night I'll wear my Ravens socks because <laughs> it's a Ravens function. Mm -hmm. But white, I, white tube socks. I can take you being down with one team. But do you really think Detroit's going to win the Super Bowl this year? I'm just trying to do stuff to inspire and push them to the next level. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good for you. You know, I like this. I, I like this uh, this attitude. You know, I, I you know rooting for a loser team my whole life. Is, Why would you? I think you'd have better luck if you, if you uh, put a, put on a, a, a tattoo. I'm praying for a plane crash involving the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers because that would increase the sure. Lions' chances. Well, the, the Lions had wasn't it one of the worst worst years in their history last year. I mean, they just had a real tough time. Well, they won three, five, five games five last games. year. Five. Yeah. But the uh, two years before that, we only won two. Weeks. Is Matt Millen still with that uh, organization? Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, well, I wanted to get the tattoo. Steve Mariucci's the coach. Oh, that's right. He's so dreamy, Steve Mariucci. Is. Dreamy Mariucci. Yes. All right. Well, J Dubs, you're a man of uh, incredible something, and thank you for coming in and showing that to us. Bye, Dubs. Are you gonna are you gonna be on the, on, on your show tonight talking about it? This would be a good plug. Oh, of course. On the hideout tonight at eleven. Eleven o'clock. Here in Washington D.C. on WJFK, you can listen to J Dubs talk about oh, <laughs> his tattoo. There you go. Bye, Dubs. Yeah. Bye. There he goes. Oh. Man, that is like a re it's it's an elaborately done tattoo. Yeah. That will not. No, you have to carve up your arm to get that thing I mean, removed. You know, without sounding gay, it's beautiful in some regards. That it's that you know that blue that the lions have. Very nicely they, it's done. It's called yeah. Hawaiian blue. Well done. I mean, it's really nice, but it's big. Big Super Bowl <laughs> champion 2005. <laughs> there you go. Okay, uh, now we have the pickle people on the phone. Ah. Good. And here's the deal. Uh, let me see. Uh, they're having a pickle festival somewhere in Michigan. Oh, man, I bet they. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, obviously we have to uh, go at this different than we uh, would have gone uh, in, in previous years. Uh, but here's good news for you. We've decided that we're going to try to do it uh, not like that. But we're going to do it the way we do the groaners. Right. Hello. I'm... Oh, no, we got to still use the fake names. Hold mm -hmm. on. I'm not Michael Scott Shannon, which is a fake name of him. I'm Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. <laughs> I'm very excited to talk to these lovely people about their pickles. The crazy <laughs> afternoon zoo. <laughs> and now, uh, Buzz, you got to yeah. have a name, because, Buzz, here's the thing. Uh -huh. you got to talk like Scott Shannon, too, every once in a while okay. to interject. So, Buzz, let me ask you. Mike, we've talked. Are we agreed that he should be named after a famous dictator? Manny Noriega. Manny. Manny Noriega. There you go. How Manny are you, Manny? I am well. Welcome to the afternoon 
Zoo. We're just delighted to have the people talking about pickles on our program. <laughs> so having said, uh -huh. having said all of that, now do we have any intro music for I, this? I was trying to think, would you like, do you want to use the other music or? No, hold on a second. Don't we have some just jive awful? Here you go. Well, this will work. This show have a name or is it just the Harry Hitler Jeff Dahmer show? Uh, no, just first names, bud. Okay. Last Harry, Harry and Jeff show. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's see. Right here. How about, oh, goodness. Uh, uh, sowing the seeds. These are all alphabetical. Right. Uh, Strut by Sheena Easton. Stand by R.E.M. She's Not There by the Zombies. Should I Stay or Should I Go by the Clash? I like 21. Number 21. It's a good morning. Switching to Glide by the Kings. Come on, don't we have any more jive? Um, good music. How about, okay, we'll go with Strut by Sheena Easton. Anybody remember that? That's an That's awful, song. oh, terrible song. Think, and we so played it so much at the other station. We did. So we're going to put these people on now. Mm -hmm. Put them live on the air. Uh, the names are Elaine and Roscoe. Roscoe. And they're promoting a pickle festival this weekend in Barron, is it, or Barron. Barron. Barron Springs, Michigan. You ready? Here we go. What the heck you doing? Hello, I'm Harry Hitler. And hey, this is Jeff Dahmer. Welcome back to another fabulous segment on the Harry and Jeff Show. And as always, we're joined by Manny Noriega. Manny, how are you? I am well. Hello, Harry and Jeff. That is super. I want to say that... If I'm having a hamburger at my barbecue over the weekend... Yes, yes, yes. Tell us all about it, Harry. Condiments will go on in the following order. Heinz ketchup. Yes. Then the Gordon's mustard. Wonderful. And then I must have a pickle. Absolutely. There's nothing finer to enjoy a crisp, fresh pickle. I have many pickles in my refrigerator as we speak. I've got lovely dill pickles from Mount Olive sitting there chilling as we speak in my refrigerator. There's nothing quite like a fresh, crispy pickle. It's the afternoon zoo. It's a minute after the hour. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Hello. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're joined by Manny Noriega. Manny, what's happening in the world today? I am excited about the Vlasic Deli pickles. Let's talk, let's let's talk to Elaine Holmes and Roscoe Bledsoe. Let's see if they're on the Harry and Jeff Afternoon Zoo. Don't forget, joke of the day coming up soon. Well, I certainly hope it's as funny as yesterday's was. <laughs> Hello, Elaine and Roscoe. Hello there. Hi, welcome. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the Afternoon Zoo. Very excited about uh, pickles. We're going to be talking pickles now because you, uh, you two crazy kids have something delightful planned for pickles, don't you? Yes, we do. Tell us, uh, tell us about your pickle festival and tell me something. Have you ever been tickled by a pickle? <laughs> I've heard of a tickle pickle before. Oh, you are so, so funny. You're working blue, aren't you? I'm trying not to work blue. I'm trying uh, to work. How did Wayne Newton put it to us, Jeff? Non blue. Non blue. Non blue. Hi, everybody. It's Harry Hitler. And this is Jeff Dollar. We're talking pickles. And tell us all about your festival, kids. Okay. Uh, Roscoe. Hello? I'll tell you something. Pickles are wonderful. Roscoe, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, Roscoe, uh, would you tell us, what is your favorite kind of pickle? Well, actually, there's, uh, I like all pickles. Can you like you, all pickles. Can you name the famous mm -hmm. comedian who taunts members of his entourage? His name, Don Pickles. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that's a that's, groaner. Oh, that's fantastic. A wonderful pickle groaner. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> crazy. It's crazy on the afternoon zoo. Don Pickles. Where it's three after. <laughs> this is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're talking pickles with Elaine Holmes and Roscoe Blimsoe. Now, listen, we will have Britney Spears concert tickets with them before you can buy them on the zoo. Coming up very, very soon. Latest hits by Joe and Joe. So, Elaine and Roscoe, how long exactly have you been making pickles? Well, actually, we don't make pickles. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> professionals to make the pickles, yes. uh, but we do relish the thought. Ah! Hold on, hold on. Did we, <laughs> <after> <laughs> rest, we got... Hold yeah. on. We've got someone on the telephone that made a funny. <laughs> hold on. Let's stop the presses right here. Woo! 
Oh, fantastic. A relish joke. Zoo. Afternoon zoo. A relish joke. I relish it. It's I wonderful. Relish we it. are enjoying <laughs> this. This is great pickle talk. Hello, everybody. And this is your old friend, Harry Hitler. <laughs> and this is Jeff Dahmer. We're not going to dilly dally around today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Manny Noriega. That wouldn't be kosher. <laughs> excellent, excellent, Manny. Oh, that Manny Noriega. And uh, Elena Roscoe. Yes. L M N P Q Cumber. <laughs> Very good. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're talking pickles this afternoon. Oh, as they are on the afternoon zoo. Say, who doesn't want to see Hillary Duff? And she's so Raven. We'll give away those tickets in moments from now on. Your fun loving, super smoking afternoon zoo. Now, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of pickles, we've uh, had many a pickle with our general managers here at these uh, radio stations. But, but of course, those go by the wayside. And we get on with the business of entertaining radio. Uh, we're with Elaine Holmes and Roscoe Bledsoe. And. What, what are you calling for, kids? They're calling to promote the Pickle Festival here. Oh, of course, yes. On the, the Afternoon Zoo. The Pickle Festival. How was it? Well, the Pickle Festival hasn't happened yet. Oh, there's still, my bad. There's still time to get in. Thank uh, goodness. July 25th, which is the last day on Sunday. And it'll be held in... You June. mean this week? Michigan. I'm busy. I, this weekend, I'm busy. Oh, no. Can't you wait. don't want to fly out and enjoy pickles? I think we'd have a fine time. <laughs> How many pickles will be consumed at your pickle festival? There will be tons of pickles consumed. Tons of pickles. Now, is it just me? Here's a Harry Hitler thought-provoking little uh, kind of a quiz for you. Is it me, or is it a cucumber somehow related to a pickle? Of course it is. Yeah. Explain the process to me. Could you explain the pickle-making process? How's it happen? I saw it on Andy and Mayberry, but I don't really remember. Well, first of all, let me... Let me back up just a little bit. There is a question, and it's probably an ancient question. What is the difference between a pickle and a cucumber? That's what I just asked moments ago. Hi, everybody. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're asking questions about pickles. It's the afternoon zoo. Don't forget Christine Aguilera tickets coming up in moments. And with pickles, I work green. <laughs> I don't work blue. I work green. And, of course, you were talking about Andy of Mayberry. And if you were watching that show, I'm sure you liked Otis because he was always pickled. Pickled. <laughs> Manny Noriega over in the news cubicle. It's now six past the hour on the afternoon zoo. Fun for the whole fun, fun family. What say you about all this pickle talk? I want to know if there'll be bread and butter pickles at the pickle festival. Sure will. Yes, there will. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, we were talking about the difference between a cucumber and a pickle. What is the difference, uh, Elaine or Roscoe? Well, actually, the difference between a pickle and a cucumber is uh, external. The cucumber is actually smooth, and the pickle has prickles. That's great. We'll have ticks for Wango Tango coming up in moments. Hello, this is the Hitmaster, the Morning Man. This is your man, Harry Hill. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're talking with Elaine Holmes and Roscoe Bledsoe. This has been such an informative segment it so has, far. I've learned an awful lot about pickles and everything that pickles stand for. Let me see if I can recap. There'll be tons of them. Uh -huh. uh, the pickles are prickly. And they come from cucumbers. Absolutely, wonderfully entertaining stuff. Will there be, will there be a pickle parade? Oh, yes. Really? Huge parade. A huge parade. Yes. Is, there, is there a pickle queen? <laughs> we do have a prince and princess. Oh, a pickle princess. <laughs> are, they, are they lucky? Can you, can you tell us their names, please? Okay, we have uh, John, Mary, and Caitlin Williams. Uh, hey, and how about one? That's from the afternoon zoo to them, to the pickle people. That's hey, wonderful, listen. wonderful stuff. Very, very entertaining. <laughs> I'm Harry Hitler. I'm Jeff Dahmer. And we're joined by Manny Noriega. Manny, before we go to our next slack of, stack of wax. Yes, Harry. Uh, listen, pickles, I know you're crazy about them. I love them. Do, do you like them sliced and thin, or do you like them thick? I prefer the thick spears of pickles. I like them right out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine and Roscoe, we want to thank you. And now, if I could ask you something. And first off, I would like to say this about our show. Please do. The Afternoon Zoo. Yes. It's a barrel of fun. 
It's more than a barrel of fun. It's a pickle barrel oh, of fun. <laughs> Fantastic. There's another one, a great singer. Highly entertaining. Let me ask you yeah. something, you cats. Uh, we're doing a show here. We're trying to get the best out of morning radio it's into sure. afternoon radio. Yes, so uh, it's an afternoon show, but it's based uh, like a morning show. A show that everyone can listen to. Soccer moms, Gen Xers. We love having characters from America on the show. How do you like the new sound of the afternoon Zoo. It's unique. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, compliments about it. The afternoon zoo with Harry and Jeff. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. And Manny, I, I know we're going to be going to Joe on the hot five and ten in a couple of minutes. That's right. right. It's now nine minutes after the hour. Hey, Elaine and Roscoe. Yes. Are you there? We're here. I'll send this one out to you. Maybe you remember this. Pickle lady herself. She ain't Baby, what's wrong with you? All right, Rob, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone now. Who do you want me to talk to? Elaine or Roscoe? Oh, they can't hear us. They're, they're on, they're on Hi, lines Elaine? where they cannot hear us. Ah, Elaine, yeah. thank All right, they, uh, you for joining us. What I like about that is okay, we didn't we say goodbye. We just went into a record. Yeah. Like, like morning disc jockeys do. Mm -hmm. confuse them even more. Next year, happy pickles. Bye, Ben. Ooh, Roscoe? That... No, he's gone. He's gone. What Rob, what, what do they say? What did Elaine say? She liked it. She liked it? Sure, <laughs> why not? Join us next year. <laughs> you weren't time. able to pro provide any information about their event. I learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> oh, that was highly entertaining. <laughs> See, it's a new way of doing an old favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, the key is never let the guests get their message across. Never right. do. And what was it? For goodness sake, what's stupid? There's something about a pickle. They're having pickle. a festival. There's a parade. A chocolate-covered pickle, candy-coated pickles. Mm. In Mi it's in Michigan. Pickles. In yeah. Michigan, ah. yeah. And don't forget, uh, they, they invite disc jockeys to ask them about pregnancy cravings. So we right. forgot to do that. No. We, weren't, we weren't good DJs. Next year. Dead. Leave them wanting more. Next year. Okay. And congratulations to John Murray, the pickle prince. Chocolate covered pickles. Maybe something about that here. That's a trip to the vomitory. <laughs> <laughs> he said, is there a pickle prince? And a pickle prince of this? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. We've known a few of those in our careers. <laughs> Uh, pickle princesses and pickle princes? That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. Oh, they were lovely people. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Don, Joe Theismann. How you doing, buddy? I listen to your show every morning. I'm sitting at my farm, and I just heard the story about McMahon. And let me explain something to you. Okay. Um, first of all, I've been there. See, you haven't been here for a short period of time. Yeah, it is me, Don. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm call, I'm, I'm, I'm flat square on. I love your program in the morning, but you don't really know what Joe Theismann's like. You ever been in a Super Bowl? Mm. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> hey. No. <laughs> you can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. Don, Mike, both of you, idiots. There he is. Now, even moister, the Don and Mike Show. Right, right. Um, I was just reading something about radio. Yeah. This is funny about radio. The, the, the names that, that go through the country and sweep the country by storm, that whatever the latest fad is, right. they get the same box of records mm -hmm. but play them in a different order and package it up differently. Right. It, for a while, it was uh, the, all the stations were Power. Remember, it was like Power 98, yeah. right. Power 96. Right. Everything's then it was... Uh, the mix, maybe right. the best mix. Mix, mm -hmm. right. That it was Kiss. There's still a lot of Kiss FMs out there. Right. And then and there was Joy. Then there was... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There was... An, 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 there are Joys out there. There are. Uh, K-Joy in Los Angeles. Right. And, uh, WSNY Columbus, where it's always sunny in 95. Mm -hmm. And then some station in Denver started calling their station Alice. <laughs> yeah, where they, they would give a proper name. And it was uh, it was Honeymooners based, right? right. Yeah, well, they had, they had an FM Top 40 station, Alice... Mm -hmm. And they had an AM talk station that was Ralph. Uh, Ralph. Right. right. And then because they did that, other dopes in radio started saying, you know what? Man, 
I'm going to call my station Alice 98. Mm -hmm. Let's think, giving a radio now, station a proper name. Now, there are there are some new ones. And doesn't it go way back? Wasn't Blue 128 that you worked at named because people like the color blue? Yeah. Well, that was way back before we... In <laughs> Nina Menasha. <laughs> Nina Menasha, Apple Dinosh guy. Right. Another w, great name. WNAM. Blue. The only impression of you that I do is, is from that when you were 14. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Blue 128. <laughs> Nina Menasha. There you go. That's it. Yeah, I worked at a radio station, an AM station. Well, I was 15. I'm yeah. the main music mother. And Blue 128. They actually called the station, it was 1280 AM. Right. But they called it Blue 128. And one day I asked why, and they said, because blue is people's favorite number. Somebody color, did, yeah. favorite color? Somebody had done a research color, study. Right. When I say number, I meant color. I'm sorry. <laughs> Looking at this. Well, cut me some slack here. <laughs> That was almost, you know what, that's 30 years ago. You were, you were a child. A tape, that tape is you were a baby disc jockey. A tape is literally 30 years old. But that was one of the early names they yes, gave radio absolutely. stations. So, now here's where I'm going with this. After they all started naming their stations Alice, mm -hmm. then some guy in Canada started a format, and he called it Jack FM. Uh, now, it's not what you think. It's the guy's name. It's just, it's Jack FM. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. Uh, I agree. And then they followed that up with Bob FM. Yes. Even dumber. And now there's a new one yeah. that's been started by our Infinity Station in Atlanta. The great station that used to be known as Z93, mm -hmm. WZ, WZGC Atlanta, great heritage call letters. Right. They announced, hey, I just got done reading an internal memo. Right. The station will now be known as Dave FM. <laughs> What's how, going on? How stupid what are What is going great. on with radio? That is how great. How stupid are radio people? <laughs> Dave FM. Dave FM. Just, and you know, they'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I just uh, understand there's a, uh, a radio station. Yeah, named after me. Wow. <laughs> wow, Mom. Did you hear that? So wait, what is the logic there? That you're going to be playing music that that men, men will like, and that what Dave is like a friendly name, so you'll think of Dave as your friend instead of... Well, can't you hear the consultant just amassing the BS? You know, the, the, the volumes oh, yeah. of papers coming in. We did about a three-month research study, and we found that the majority of men have at some point in their lives had a friend named Dave. And now think about it. Doesn't Dave FM sound like a friendly place? A name that everyone can relate to, and most importantly, an inoffensive name. We uh, did some uh, target research, and Dave tested well. <laughs> and, then, and that would be the little guy with the glasses right. sitting next to him with the briefcase. You know? Meanwhile, maybe... Put it away now. Maybe I, I pray there's one person just screaming, you know... People know Z93 in Atlanta yeah, right. for like 25 years, even though it's a screwed up station. If you're going to give a radio station a proper name, why don't you give it a you know a good name like Stanley? <laughs> Hold on. Here's a call from Maine. We've got... Now, I've never heard of this one in Maine. Loretta. Seth? Yeah, that's me. Hi, Seth. What do you got up in Maine? We have Frank FM. <laughs> Frank FM. Does that have anything to do with Frank Sinatra? No, it doesn't. Nothing. They play a lot of Seeger. Frank. Yeah, they play, they play a lot of Seeger. Frank FM. Frank FM. <laughs> Retarded. I mean, it's, has any research shown that, that in some way it's supposed to aid your memory? Or Here's the, here's the thing. Know. Yes, that's what the radio guys will tell you. They say that that was what originally got people with this Alice thing, that women instead of, you know, because women's minds are, are so small to begin with, that <laughs> you, you, get, you couldn't get like four call letters in there that they could remember, but right. they could remember Alice. And that way you're not thinking of it as a radio station, Mike. You're thinking of it as a friend. Uh, What's Dave doing today? Uh, I understand he's uh, he's going head-to-head -head with Alice. 
<laughs> Go ask Alice. And Frank's trying to get in the middle of it. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, this is a good thing about having a national show. Here's Angelo from uh, Kansas. Angelo. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Angelo, what do you got there? Hey, we got a Shaniqua FM. You do not have a Shaniqua FM. You're lying. That's funny. That's not funny. That's actually that funny. brilliant. <laughs> That's very funny. Shaniqua FM. Shaniqua FM. Okay, uh, <laughs> here's the latest. So anyway, radio is still a... An awfully crazy business to be in. Yeah, and, and, and really, you get into trouble when any uh, suit begins to think in radio. Right. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You got, uh, it started with Alice, then Ralph, then the Bob, Jack, and now Dave. Where's the Tony? <laughs> I'm sure. Mike, you laugh. I'm sure. But there's a there Tony out there? Tony FM. Uh, that's just, I, I would say it's uh, overdue, you, you understand. <laughs> Bacardi Limon. What if there was a Tony Diggs of him? I, yeah, but I, I would, I would, um, I would make sure that I'd listen to it. Picardi Limon. You understand? He's our yeah. chief engineer. What if, what if there was a Wendell FM? Winner! Where all they played was the Charlie Daniels band. We got the Charlie Daniels band coming up as a Charlie, Charlie Daniels weekend, followed by a Charlie Daniels countdown. And very soon, Leonard Skinner! Coming up, your chance to win a free rifle. This is Wendell Hall. Please enjoy. Winner! Molly Hatchet! You're listening to Wendell FM. Wendell <laughs> Molly Hatchet. Yes. Who wants to hear Freebird again? It's, what about, it's what, all Skinner. <laughs> what about if it was, uh, if it was Alan? WMDL! <laughs> Wendell! Hi. All right, and now when you're on my show, we always say, who's in the hall? <laughs> Hi. This is Yallin. <laughs> Welcome to Yallin FM. Yallin, where it's always pleasing to everybody. <laughs> here, here would be the format on Alan Station. Yallin FM. All commercials. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it would have to be all commercials because if anyone called in with a request, they'd say, you know, we're looking into that. <laughs> we'll get to it within the year. Welcome to Yallin FM. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, we've got more. Here's another guy in Maine. James. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hi, James. How's it going? Uh, the guy that uh, mentioned Frank, he forgot to mention the bone. <laughs> the, the bone. The bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that a thing? Is that, what's that, an uh, album rock? Well, now, see, I know that maybe that's a ripoff or one, that, you know, nothing's original. I know on XM right. there's a channel like that. I think I just dated myself, too. Is, there, is that album rock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on, on XM, isn't there like a bone, 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 bone yard, right, where they that's play stuff like rock, Oh, is that no. classic rock? I don't know. Right, i got to mind my mood ring. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> um, album rock. Uh, here is Cliff in Oregon. Cliff. Hey, I was going to remind you guys that y'all are played on Max 910 AM here. <laughs> Max. Oh, so, like station, so we're on one of these stations. Max. Yeah, Max. Max. Talk radio for guys. What is it? What is it now? It's Max 910. Talk radio for guys. Are the call letters W M A X? Uh, no, no. One knows. probably not. Right. Probably. See, Those that's what people remember. You see, mm -hmm. it's starting to be proven. They don't remember call letters, but they certainly remember it's Max. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. Thanks. Max, that's the name of our station in Portland. Wow. Okay. I, like, I like Maxi better than Max. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, it's Maxi. Hello, Maxwell. Come on over to our pad. Maxwell, he's smart. Hello. <laughs> Maxwell, come to our house. Maxwell. Maxwell House. Maxwell Smart. That is, I'm, I would be out of the Maxwell game. Maxwell, see? Hello. Hello. Don and Mike show. Max von Sydow. Hello. Well, that's not Maxwell. That's Max. Maxwell's tough. Does that mean you're king of the Maxwells? I think so. So it's not a crown I proudly wear. I, I give it to you if you want it. Maxwell Smart is... <laughs> that's it. And, and Maxwell House Coffee. And Silver Hammer. And it, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Maxwell oh, Buzz. Oh, somebody jumped into the fray here. Buzz, Buzz, right. Buzz. You want to you wanna swim with the uh, big boys? you got to put your swim fins on. And not to mention... Oh, I, I would love to alarm. play. And I'd love to play uh, the Max Click. Game. You'd what? I'd like to play the Max game. Okay. Max Bear. Max Schmitz. Max... <laughs> You just said that to say his name, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Never mind. It's a guy we used to work with. Yeah, I Max Schmidt. <laughs> Max Schmidt. Although we always pronounced it Schmitz. Yes. We always we always put an S on the end of his name when there really was not an S. No. If they, if Why that... do we always say Max Schmitz? Because then I, you know, uh, his brother is a good friend of mine now. I know. And he, they, they don't look anything alike. <laughs> well, maybe they're like me and my brother. Maybe they're adopted. Max Schmidt. Looks like a character out of The Simpsons. But do you know? <laughs> yeah, he does. He's he has got, those Simpsons eyes. He's not. He's not as big as Barney. Right. But he kind of looks like. You know the kid that always the little kid that always says, 
I just ate a booger out of my nose. Yes. Yeah. You know, that was... Yeah. Is, is it Ch Chief Wiggum's kid? Yes. That's who, that's who Max Schmitz kind of looks like. <laughs> and, Ralph and, Ralph. Uh, and do you know that if... <laughs> If Jack Nicholson starred in the movie, it would be about Schmitz. About Schmitz. It would right. be about Schmitz. We did put the S on the end of that, and I don't know why. And we hmm. still do. Max uh, Schmitz. Hello, uh, hold on. Here's another dumb radio call. Kevin uh, in Ocean City. Kevin. Yeah, we had a space around here called Jane for a little while. It's one of the worst stations we ever had. Oh, Ocean City. I've heard that station. Yeah, right. They played like Faith Hill. And the same box of records. Uh, I love Aiken. that. I heard that. So I was addicted to that station. <laughs> it's like a playlist of 30 songs all day. It's terrible. Jane, you're listening to Jane. Uh, here's Dean in Spokane, Washington. Dean. How are you doing, Mike? Dean's Peanuts, what's happening? Hey, not too much. There's a talk radio station here in Spokane. It's uh, 590 AM, and their call letters are KQNT. I was wondering what they should call that one. <laughs> okay, hey, you. Stop. All right, you. troublemaker. Get out of here. You go right back. You go right back to bed. Get Quaint. out of here. Yeah, right. Thank you, Buzz. Quaint. Quaint. I love Dean. <laughs> do you read this? I do love Dean. <laughs> and now you can get these great shows from a great entertainer. <laughs> Hello, uh, here's Keith in Nevada. Keith, or is it Nevada? Hey, Nevada. Yeah, dude, Nevada. Keith. Keith, what's Nevada, happening? Nevada, tomato, tomato, right, whatever. Well, what's happening? <laughs> Wait, we got an extreme radio in Las Vegas. Right? Now, 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 see, that's not like giving it a, 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 a name, name of a person. Name. We're on a lot of stations. But I are, hate extreme. That are called extreme. I hate extreme sports. Or hot talk. I mean, I don't mind the sports. I hate the name of them. Hold on, this one might extreme. be the winner. <laughs> From Salt Lake, here's Gary. <laughs> Gary. Yeah, don't, don't tell me that this is a real radio station. No, it was. You know, it was a few years back, but it's not around anymore. And it was called Diana, and I kid you not, they played hip hop. Diana? Now, oh. now yeah. I would think. Would, I would think. Oh, that's amazing. I would think dead Diana. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. car crash right. Diana is what I would think. I would think Paul Anka's Diana. If they play, no, was, I mean, seriously, that that type of station would play like oldies, super old elevator music. Well, I, or they would just play that dumb Candle in the Wind song that Elton John keeps right. promising he's never going to play again. No, it was Diana, and they had it. They tried to make it real hard. Or what if it was a Diana Ross? You're listening to Diana. To Diana. All right, Thanks. thank you. Yep. See you later. Bye bye. Yeah. Radio guys are dumb. Radio guys are dumb. Everybody's calling now with stuff that I see on the board. Like uh, these don't count. People, people want to get their stations in trouble. Like if it's a. Uh, Star FM. No, no, no that that doesn't no. count. Only only dumb names count. Like Larry and, and the dumbest. <laughs> Larry would be great, Buzz. <laughs> With Larry <Or> J would... <laughs> Dubs. <laughs> and, and, and their sweeper guy would sound like. <laughs> How do you like my tattoo? <laughs> he is Buzz. Come on, on that show he is the dumb one. He's a nice guy. Oh, but he loves that, Buzz. I I talk to him all the time. He's fine with that. He's he doesn't have a and problem. And what do you say when you talk to him, Mike? He says, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Russian's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> As you clear these, clear these lines out. Uh, I want to tell you about CSI. Uh, about Oh, a great story about the CSI. Call now for the secret sound, which today is worth. Beth Ann has written it down. 400, Beth Ann. 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. 400 bucks if you can identify the common everyday sound, the secret sound. Phone number 877-365-3636. Be the 100th caller and you get a chance to win the money. Um, here's the deal with the CSI people. Mm -hmm. That Georgia Fox, yeah. who was fired, right. she was never really fired. Okay. She got her job back. All right, what about now, the guy? The other guy, George Eads, yeah. here's his spin. His spin is... That he woke up three hours late on the first day when they were going to film CSI for the new season. He called up and said, hey, this is George. I'm, I'm tired and I'm sorry I overslept. And they said, don't bother coming in. So, she's got her job back. And I have now a quote from George Eads. Uh, of course, there's all this talk that, you know, he, that they have the same agent and that they... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they were actually holding him up and for more money. They were going right. to hold out for more money and then, you know, Leslie Moonves, uh, the, the CBS guy who's on our show sometimes, he's, he, he didn't blink and he said, go out, I'll, I'll fire your ass. The hell with them, they're not the stars of the show. <laughs> this is too funny, though. This guy, George Eads, says, quote, they think it's about money and it's really not. I overslept. 
I woke up white as a sheet three and a half hours later after I was supposed to be on the set. Now, here's where, as I pointed out yesterday with Will Smith, the guy who just doesn't get it, mm -hmm. here's a guy who's much smaller on the food chain than yeah. Will Smith, right? but has already got the head as big as Will Smith's ear. Okay, and then that can get you in trouble. Here's what he says. It's like I'm the quarterback with the Dallas Cowboys, and I overslept the first day of practice. I expect the coach to have me run hills and run sprints until the sun goes down, but not, you know, completely fire me. I want this to work out. Mm -hmm. See, dude, let me tell you something. <laughs> hey, you're not the quarterback. No. Right. You, you're not even like the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. You, you, you know, no, you, it's the wrong analogy. The, the, the quarterback of CSI is William Peterson. Yeah, he's he's and, he's right. like a, a defensive and tackle. Mark Helgenberger is is the uh, Marshall Falk of that show. Absolutely, and, and maybe uh, Georgia Fox maybe is the the Terrell Owens of that show. But he is not one of the and, uh, main principals. And the mm -hmm. the guy that digs up bodies, he he would be like maybe the Ricky Williams of that show. Would you say that the guy that's got the uh, crutches? Is is higher on the yeah, picking that, order? That's, I, I was just saying, yeah, that, that, right. yeah, yeah, right. he would be. I think maybe on, a, a guy lower on the pecking order than this guy, George Eads, would be the guy that was on Larry Sanders. Yep, absolutely, mm -hmm. right. right, absolutely. So, George Eads, listen, my friend, I have, I, I indeed have met him, and you are. <laughs> You are no quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, no matter who he is. And I'm talking Roger Staubach, Danny White. I'll even go back to the crappy Cowboys quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, like Chad Hutchinson. <laughs> Dude, you're not even a Chad Hutchinson. And you know, that guy on the show, don't you agree that, I mean, as far as a guy that's kind of bland, that doesn't really bring a lot to the table, it would be him? Yeah. I mean, he's a pretty boy, but that's about it. He sure does. But he's got a stupid look. Yeah. He sure does. It's like I'm the Cowboys quarterback. Now, hello. Now, that would be P that would be Peterson. Get me Peterson. We need William Peterson. Oh, and he oh, here's his last the last part of his quote. CSI is a part of who I am. Hey, listen, dumbass. CSI is all you are. <laughs> CSI is it. Not unless you want to count your dumb made-for-TV movie about evil Knievel. And incidentally, <laughs> nice picture in the paper today. Looks like an Elvis impersonator. You think maybe they used the oversleeping, even if he's telling that uh, as the truth, and he wasn't trying to make a statement. If he overslept, maybe they used that as an excuse. Hey, now we can get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. You know, who's to say? Why not? Yeah, maybe he was walking around saying, "God, I'm only making whatever, like three or four million dollars a year." You know, this show really needs me. And the girl is uh, much more of a central character than he is. Sure, she is. Right. They, they both were making a hundred grand per episode. CBS offered them one twenty. They held out for more, and that's when everything fell apart. Hmm. Well, thank goodness she's back. And and the quarterback, the quarterback, act act. Sure, uh, Georgia didn't get a raise, but she did get dental. So <laughs> she's. Got Got the gap to she do uh, need the she, she do need the Da Vinci veneers, don't she? She does have. She really. Yeah. Needs, she got that nice big Letterman space between her teeth. Yeah, you can put rope in there. Uh, when we come yeah. back, call her one hundred for the secret sound. And what is this? Oh, something about Martha Stewart. Uh, we talked about Martha Stewart's jail yesterday. Jail. Today we will have a sentencing advisor. Listen to this company. This is a good a good pull by Beth Ann. Mm -hmm. There's a company called Federal Prison Consultants. So if you're getting nailed like Martha Stewart did, right? yeah, right, yeah, and she will be getting yeah. nailed. Yeah, you go to them. So we'll talk to her and we'll get our call caller 100 right after this. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show. So toast them in a 350 degree oops. oven. Oops, oops. Come on, computer. This is the Don and Mike Show. Be a nice computer. Until now. you can just sort of smell the nuts. Yeah. And then remove them from the oven and place them on a clean cloth. And notice when I rub the nuts with the cloth, mm -hmm. the skins kind of just fall off. Yes. I'm going to get the nuts as clean as possible. Every speck doesn't have to come off. But um, if you rub hard enough, most of the skin will pop right off the nut. It's a simple way to do a lot of nuts in a short period of time. Pray for death. The Don and Mike Show. All right, thank you. That's course, wonderful, Martha. Hey, can I just say, my, my daughters are on the way to the Hillary Duff concert tonight. And if they're listening right now, I want to say, Catherine and Elizabeth, have a wonderful time at your very first concert. It begins. Hillary Duff. That's in their wheelhouse. Got to start somewhere. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely. Let me just say both uh, to both your girls, Catherine and yes. Elizabeth, if yes. you're listening right now. Mm-hmm. 
Don't forget, Daddy got you those tickets. <laughs> no, no, Mommy bought the tickets. I know, but did, Daddy got the thing. Didn't hopefully. Daddy get the backstage? Uh, that fan did that, and hopefully they're gonna. You know, you know how it is with that stuff. We, we've oh, we've about... had that experience with the whole backstage thing. If they get that, it's gonna be gravy. And thanks to Beth Ann and her help with that. Beth Ann, mm -hmm. before we get our caller 100, or, or while I'm doing it, you, come in here right now, please, and bring your purse. <laughs> Have you been going through Beth Ann's purse? I have not been going through her purse, Mike. I have not. I promise I have not. Let's get a caller 100. Uh, hello, Don and Mike show. Hello? Call 100. Oh, this computer, this touch screen. Oh, it's going to be a punch screen. <laughs> not a touch screen. <laughs> hello? Call 100. Oh, hey, are you there, caller 100? Can you hear us, caller? Hello? Yes, can you hear us? Now, I know he can hear us. All of the buttons are in the proper configuration. Yeah, All right, can caller, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Well, what is the problem? Then how come he didn't say anything for a long time? Uh, I had you guys on the speaker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on one second. You're caller 100. I'm coming right back to you to play the, the, the secret right. sound. Oh, God, uh, he doesn't win. Uh, Cindy will be right with you, okay, honey? No problem. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, hold on. Your name's not Cindy, pal. What's dummy, wrong hold with on, you? Hold on, contest winner. Hold on a second. No, no, I'm not the contest winner. No, I know. I was calling the other guy, dummy. Hold on, please, Cindy. <laughs> hold on. It's so confusing. Uh, Beth Ann, yeah. I was just in the back room looking for you to ask you a question, and I couldn't help but notice. But then you can pull that microphone down. Couldn't help but notice. On your tiptoes. Couldn't notice your purse. Can you show everybody what it says on your purse? <laughs> what does it say? What does it say, Mike? Can you read that? It says, and I'll say it because I've got a good voice for it today. It says, love dog. Or is it love dog? Yeah, it's love dog because you love your dog. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and more than you love your daughter. No. Or equally? Equally is what she look. said, In and that, that is unacceptable. Let's find out if it's equal. Do you have a love daughter purse? It won't fit. I've tried. Oh, I see. What about putting it on the other side? You know what would fit? It's impractical. You could put love, love yeah. Jen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your daughter's name is, is Jen. That would fit. That, that would work. I'm going to change it right now. Oh, it's got like little uh, yeah, Velcro letters on it. Changeable. Oh, yes. It's got letters. Letters. You could oh, spell anything on it. Velcro letters. Love Jen. Oh, man. So put on there that you love your daughter. Is that a new style of purse where you can put the letters and spell something? Did that come with the purse? Yeah. Hey, call her 100. on t-shirts, too. Hey, what, yeah. hey what, what's your name, dude? Omar. Omar. Yes. I'm sorry, Omar. We, uh... <laughs> You know, I'm sorry. That you know what that Did we have is. Some interference? No, no, no. It was just I just got done watching the videotape of those guys going through Dallas before the 9/11 uh, thing. <laughs> no. I just thought with now Omar. That you don't. Do I know. That. I know. That's we don't. We don't. Terrible. We don't, we don't, don't do that on this show. Omar. Yes. Uh, what's your last name, sir? Johnson. If you're going to discriminate against this guy, discriminate him because, uh, against him because he had us on the speaker, and then he thought that he was sinful. Right. Uh, listen, Omar, congratulations. Uh, first, you've won two seats for Yes, Nissan Pavilion at uh, Wednesday, August 25th. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Uh, go online at NissanPavilion.com. Uh, cool. Excuse me, uh, you're Omar. Omar. Yeah. Omar, you're going to play for Beth Ann. What are you doing? Beth Ann said you got a letter. You missed a letter. Oh, she's still fixing her Buying purse. Buying a vowel. Well, uh, it should be I love Jen. You don't have an I. You I? She doesn't have an I. So now it says Don. You'll be happy to know it says love Jen. Uh, very good uh -huh. on your purse instead of love dog. Thank you, Beth Ann. Thank you. Uh, listen, uh, Omar. Yes. Here's the sound. It's a common everyday sound. Uh, if you can identify it, you will walk away with four hundred dollars. Mm. Are you ready? Yes. Omar, we'll need proof of citizenship if you win. I got a good one for him. Uh, good luck, Omar. Here we go. Caller, name this sound. Here it comes, Omar. That. That's it. Now you have to say, as opposed to other secret sounds, it's not that 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 sound that everybody hated before. It's a different sound. It's it's a clicking. Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Yeah. But it's not a clicking. No. No, it's it's not the click like bothered everybody before, but it might be another form of clicking. It still might be a click. Uh, Omar, for four hundred dollars, what is the sound? Is it a uh, toilet? Yeah, a toilet. Is it a toilet? Yeah. Yes, like the little the little thing that's inside the toilet when you flush it. What little thing that's inside the toilet? Omar? Explain. Can you give us more detail? Like you know, like that that you know. No, the like proper the little, name for it. The proper name little, for it. The little stopper thing that's inside the toilet. Can't use, you can't use the word thing. The, the what? You can't use the word thing. The doodad. 
The doodad. No, you're real close. Yeah, he's almost got yeah. it. Yeah. Omar, gosh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, we're I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, Omar. That, of course, is uh, not a uh, not a good guess. But don't forget that every guess is it's a, a clue, clue, for for you. clue for you. Let me just say Omar Peter. And thank you, Omar. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. He was fun. Let me say, I stand by my spidey sense on that guy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just say, I stand by. And that name, Omar Johnson, didn't that sound a little hinky to anybody else? Hi, my name is Omar Johnson. Hey, I'd like to point out one of the great uh, figures of history, Omar Bradley. Okay. Okay. I got my eye on him too. <laughs> yeah. if you got your eye on him is going to be dirt. I know. I got a. I got a. I got a thought. If you see Almar's uh, ID, Johnson might be in quotation marks. Here now is uh, here's Cindy Gardner on the line. Hi, Sydney. Uh, Cindy. You sure I didn't win the contest? Yeah. Nope. Would you like? Would you like to guess the sound? Uh, I kind of thought it was rain hitting a tin roof. <gasps> Now, stop. This is our guest. Be nice, no, boys. No, of course not. It's no. not that sound. Now, Cindy, listen to this job. She's a sentencing advisor for federal prison consultants. So, what, is, what does this mean? What is your job? We're fascinated with Martha Stewart going to jail. I was, I was mentioning yesterday some of the conditions at the, at the jail that she's going to be working You're, you're at. a sentencing consultant? I mean, would you consult? An advisor. A sentencing advisor. I'm actually a prison consultant. A prison consultant. Explain what you do. What mm -hmm. our company does um, is strategic planning of a sentence, meaning things that are going to say Martha Stewart post-conviction. We may get involved as early as indictment states to help plan those things, such as should Martha uh, have received a bigger sentence, like maybe we were all expecting, and then there may have been programs that could have reduced her sentence. There may have been... So hold on. Mm -hmm. are, are there people... Is your service for people who... Get arrested like Martha Stewart? Uh, would she call you after she got arrested to say after she was indicted? Yeah, yeah. Help, help me out here. Sure. We have people in all different stages of prosecution. Someone may call us um, at the indictment stage. Someone may call us plea bargain sentencing. We have family uh, members who call us about uh, inmates who are now, you, incarcerated. My question to you would be: You obviously, it's, it would sound to me that you would work with primarily. With the with the attorneys, but do you consult as well if someone say gets their sentence and they know where they're going? Do you do you consult with them on on how to handle the jail time? Yes, we do. Our oh. our, our services range uh, a multitude of things. Yes, it is one thing that we do. Do we help prepare our clients? Who's the uh, uh, Cindy? Who's excuse me? Who's who's the biggest name that you that you've consulted that we would have heard of? We do not disclose any names. Guys. Oh, you don't you don't reveal the names. Oh, well, then what's the point of having you on the show? A lot of our clients. You what? I'm sorry. I can guarantee you guys have heard of a lot of our clients. And and mm. is but most usually... of our clients, to be honest with you, ninety percent of the clients are everyday people. So uh, it, it, does it necessarily? Do you have to have the real big bucks to use your your service? No, not at all. Really? It's, that's. I mean, it would just seem to me that. Uh, it, everybody that that would uh, be like first time going to to jail might want to get a little uh, insight into what they have to deal with. You know, I, I was reading something t today in the Washington Post. Mike just read it. I read it this morning by Tina Brown. As much as I yelled at that Lisa D, whatever her name is, last week, this is brought, Tina Brown writes uh, very insightful. I think, in, in my opinion, in the Post about Martha Stewart and the mm -hmm. fact that the big deal is. I remember I said she's got stones because she came out and like did the commercial and right. and I thought if she was a man, people would say, boy, she's got stones. And instead, mm -hmm. she's just a bitch. Well, and Tina Brown also writes about the fact that uh, in the in this country now we were addicted to this. Uh, you know, that people apologize. Apologizing. So, right. so listen, Cindy, if you were working with Martha Stewart and, and she had gone out in front of the cameras right after she was sentenced and started the advertisement for the magazine and the products, would you have pulled her aside and said you're nuts? Well, that's not my job, to be quite honest with you. That's her PR person. Uh, apparently, what she's done is not doing the company a disservice because her stock you know, has been rising. Yeah, I mean, that was really the goal, I think, yeah, that she did. In general, um, my job is to sit down with a client. A client may call me and say, hey, I'm looking 47 to 51 months. What are we looking at, worst case scenario, if I get hit with this sentence? What's best case scenario? That we can work on. Right. Can you, can, when you consult somebody that's getting going to get sentenced, mm -hmm. can you help them in uh, determining where they're going to be doing their time? That type of thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. H how do you do that specifically? The judge makes a recommendation. So what we need to start doing when we're consulting with our clients is figure out 
what's the best place for the client? Many of my clients um, have addictions of some sort and need to get help in that respect. Some of my clients may be able to get into a boot camp and reduce their sentence. Some of my clients may need educational programs. So we determine... But generally, but generally speaking, no matter what the offense, no matter from the most heinous, the white-collar crime, to whatever you consider pedestrian crime, mm -hmm. most people say, give, give me the easiest possible... Yeah, give me the place with the best gym. Yeah, g give me a place where I can watch uh, cable TV, right. where I can have a, a diet soda, you know... Um, Ice cream. Uh, well, ice cream would be nice. What is uh, <laughs> currently, as far as federal penitentiaries go, what is the easiest time to do? You must uh, know the answer to that. As far as uh, what would be considered it's easy. Not a penitentiary, time. that's for sure. It's not uh, not a penitentiary. It's we have camps, and and you guys, not maybe not you guys, because I don't really listen to you guys that often, because we don't get you in Philadelphia. It's very upsetting. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, but that's too bad. They're playing a great box of records today on WYSP. <laughs> 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 a really great box. Um. At, at this point, you would want to be put into a minimum security camp. That's for nonviolent, non-sexual offenders. That's where Martha's going to go. Now, is, is Martha going to be, and it, is she going to be the target in prison of not only uh, making fun of and saying, oh, look at her, there's Martha Stewart, how do you feel down here? Is she going to be someone's love? Love. Um... <laughs> Is she going to be a kept woman? Love, is that what you're asking me? Is, yeah, prison love. Is she going to? Is someone going to? If it's a minimum security with nonviolent offenders, is, is there still a chance that there are people that have been in and out and that, that might be doing a second tour there? That uh, where you know she might get the type of thing that you normally see in movies about prison, where drop the soap. where she's approached by you know by say some of the uh, drop, yeah, like you said, drop the soap. Yeah. Right. Um, in most cases, no. We what we do have to understand something. It's still prison. There's still counts that go on. Things still happen. So if I were to say that she may may not be or she wouldn't be the target, that's not true. She very well could be. The what do you think the odds are? What do you think the odds are? Small. That, very small. Can you put a number on it just for those listening in Las Vegas? What are the odds? <laughs> Uh, well, we're not daring anybody in prison. I know, of course, no, we're not. No. And their prison is an awful place. But what do you think? That's fine, guys. What do you think? A thirty percent chance? No, not even. Twenty percent. If you were to look on the bureau, and you can go to our website, federalprisonconsultants.com. There's all types of statistics. Oh, I'm going to go there. That sounds like a fun site. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got games. You got 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 some good pop ups, some message boards. Well, I, uh, let me go to the full the get away from Martha Stewart <laughs> and go to the, the the complete other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. You have a uh, person that's uh, been involved in say a murder and they're going to do very serious time mm -hmm. and they're going to go away and they're going into the real big house the real federal pen what do you uh and but they've never been in before what do what do you say to prepare them we we, we offer them more than a prayer but in general <laughs> our client base is normally um the best client base is to get five years or less we can still work with people who are looking at five to ten uh -huh. um, anything over ten we have to prepare <laughs> our client Obviously, um, you need to be, you're, you're probably in a medium security facility where there's going to be violent sexual offenders. They need mm -hmm. to be prepared. There may be programs that we can still get them in mm -hmm. and move them into mm -hmm. uh, a situation where they're in less violent company. But mm -hmm. you get what you pay for and what they're, they're going to pay, unfortunately, for something that they've been found guilty of. Boy, I, you know, I, I, I think I understand what you just said. Yeah, me it's, too. Yeah. It's scary. Me you know, too. I know. Like, you know. At a certain point, yeah, you know, I know. Bye bye. Yeah, I know. At that, You're that on point, your own. At that point, it's like no, you, no, no. you've hired a consultant. Nobody's on their own when 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 I'm with them. However, no, no, honey, listen. I uh, excuse me, Cindy. Yes. No, if I'm walking down that hallway, as soon as that door shuts, yeah. I got news for you. I'm crossing my legs for the next <laughs> ten and a half years. You're not showering, are you? Oh man, that what, is terrifying. Uh, what advice do you give to guys who have to do serious time and find themselves facing that fear? Hmm. Good question. But, It'd be good if you had an answer ready, Cindy. <laughs> I have an answer, but you know, we 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 do have a wide audience. Yeah. Uh, okay, you got to clean it up. Right, be careful. I got you, be so, careful. Yeah. So you watch there's, out. There's, we can do something for everyone. But it's it's unrealistic to think someone who's convicted of murder is walking out tomorrow. We have appeals processes that we also do. So we have a different part of my company that deals with appellate issues. Uh -huh. Cindy, let me ask you. So, me, I want to give you an example. I want to give it. I'm I'm say going to go do. I'm doing a 10 year stretch. Uh, there's no way I'm going to a medi medium uh, security facility where there are violent offenders. And this is a question I would have if it was the first time I was going to prison. If somebody was to challenge me to a fight. 
I've seen in movies that you have to fight. If you don't fight, Mike, it's going to be a much you have worse. To stand out, or you do like Sean Connery. You pick out the meanest guy and you beat the snot out of him. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, like a real guy can do I that. I mean, would that be a question that you've ever gotten? You know, what do I do if somebody comes after me? I get that question from people who, who are spending six months in jail. Okay. Oh. The, the answer is... You're serving the time, and you have to understand the consequences. Mm. So the consequences are, should you get into a fight, and I talk to my clients about getting this much more time at it. If you don't fight, you may not be doing any time because you're leaving in a cardboard box. Mm. So mm. the determination has to be made for the client. All I can do is impart information. Wow, wow. Sounds, sounds amazing. Scary. It is I'm, scary as hell. I'm going to learn to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me, too. me too. And uh, last thing here. What a horrible situation. Martin mean, yeah, Stewart, what it is. You, you're a sensing advisor for the Federal Prison Consultants Incorporated. How is she going to do once she finally gets in there? Is she going to make it out in five months okay? Yeah, she's, she's really going to be fine. What's going to happen in a situation such as hers? Again, you run the risk that you may find someone who uh, wants to ridicule, ridicule Martha. Um, she's Kiss her. She's best just walking away. Touch her. Exactly. She's been there. She knows. Play with her hair. <laughs> she may get some nice braids, but that's not the point. <laughs> Try to get some I nice braids. Cornrow her hair. Okay. Yeah. And this place going to be fine. All right. She's going to work. She's going to do what everyone else does in prison. Yeah. Um, All right, honey. Listen, thank, thank you for your time. We are out of time. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy, that's fascinating, and it's yeah. also very, very scary. But, you know, well, obviously you're... Her because I hear you guys are always in trouble. <laughs> yeah. well, we're, we're working on that. Huh? You'll, you'll hear from us. All right, goodbye. Bye, guys. Goodbye, bye, -bye. Cindy. There she is. You know, on a certain level, that scared the yeah. pants off of me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends. You're going to get time added to your sentence or you're going to leave in a cardboard box. Wow. And you're paying for that advice. Wow. She's the consultant. Yeah. You're paying for that advice. Wow. I'd want, you know, if, if you were going to do that minimum security stuff, I think it would be a good service to avail yourself of. It's like yeah. President Lincoln calling somebody and saying, I got a night out tonight. What do you What do you think? <laughs> I think you should go to the plane. Oh. Sit in the front row. Have a good time. Uh, phone scan now. 877-365-3636. It's like, it's like JFK. Oh, somebody said, I'm going to spend the weekend in Dallas. What do you think? Uh, convertible or not? Okay. Calm down. Call now. Calm down. Call now for a phone scan. Because we don't screen these calls. At 877-365-3636. This is the Don and Mike Show. Trip this by hand, Rob. Uh, BMW and Apple have created the first seamless integration of iPod and automobile. If you've ever made a custom cassette tape of your favorite music, then you already understand the concept of playlists. That's a heavy concept, Dave FM. You choose which songs to play and the order in which to play them, duh. It starts with iTunes. Create as many playlists as you want, include as many songs as you want, rearrange the songs until the order is just right. Hey, Buzz. Yes. What, what say you about BMW? I can't wait Thanks, to drive Buzz. This technology only works with 2002 or later 3 Series and X5 and in all model years of the X3 and Z4 Roadsters. I should mention if I have time, they want us to ask Buzz an ad lib comment, but then there's no room for there's it. No because time. We have to say, however, the adapter cannot be installed in vehicles with navigation systems, satellite radio, DSP, CD changer, or cassette player. You must update your iPod with the latest iTunes software. Uh, adapter is available only at BMW Center starting July 12th. For more information, go to iPodYourBMW.com. BMW is great for senior citizens. Isn't that right, Buzz? That's right. What, Buzz? I'm going to Canada. <laughs> the Don and Mike Show. Good buzz, Robbie. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hey, hey, be careful with that. That's the most powerful trank gun on the market. Huh. Got her in Mexico. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. They say it can puncture the skin of a rhino from a... Ow! Oh. Yes! That's awesome! What? You just took one in the jugular, man! Huh. Whoa! Yes! Is this bad? You should pull that out. Wait. Wait. Pull it out. The dart, man. Got a dart in your neck. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. I'm so tired. It's on in my show.
Hi, this is Evil Knievel. I'm here in Washington, D.C. with my son, Robbie. Robbie, would you ever listen to Don Geronimo and Michael Mara? Oh, Neither yeah, would I. Right. Hi, this is Bob Barker from The Price is Right, and I never listen to the Don and Mike. No, that's right, you don't, do you? What about you, Batman? This is Bruce Wayne, millionaire philanthropist, of course, Bruce, and Batman and Adam West, and I never listen to Don Geronimo and Michael yeah, Mirren. Of course, Bruce. And then, you know, the guy in Jeopardy keeps on winning. Oh, Hi, yeah. everyone, this is Alex Trebek. Listening to Don Geronimo and Michael Mara is really putting yourself in jeopardy. So I never do it. And you, uh, oh, and here's Dude. World class dancers, Don and Mike. Right, right. I should mention ahead of the phone scan, uh, we just played the Alex Trebek tape. The guy, Ken Jennings, mm -hmm. won again last night. What I'm, is his uh, total right now? Uh, over a million, and it's like 35, 36, 37 shows in a row. And not only is he winning, but isn't he just amassing an amazing amount of cash while up, he's up, doing up. it? Uh, tomorrow on the show we'll have a loser this week. He just lost on Monday, and he's bitter. Yeah, he's not happy about it. Good. The guy's name is Tim, listens to us in Las Vegas. He was on Jeopardy and lost to this freak, and he's pissed. So he'll join us tomorrow. Folks, <laughs> Phone scan, phone scan. Here we go. 877-365-3636. Your calls. These are on screen from across America. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don, Mike. Yes, we are. Hi. Yeah, it's Mike. What's up? Well, track lighting. What's happening, dude? Track lighting. I don't know, man. Uh, that was... Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Know. You know what? Hello? I, I, listen, hello, dummy. You say what's up. I give you what is... a. Arguably, uh, maybe a 75-80% killer joke. <laughs> What's up, fluorescent lighting? Right. You got me. You got me. I'm yeah, playing yeah. with you. You got to play with me, dude. I try. What's up? I'll tell you what's not up. CBS stock. <laughs> oh, but they had a good day. Oh, did they really? Yeah. How good, Mike? I mean, real good. Good enough that you and I should get a boat? And... No, you know what? <laughs> You'd leave the country? You know, you, you, you and I aren't on that same dance floor. You know, you you're the you're the you're still the company man on that. I don't oh. I don't got none no more. Oh, you don't have your Viacom. I don't stock? got nothing. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. I really don't have anything. I know. I know. Um, but but no, there's a news story. Uh, one of the business uh, business reports today was talking about how well Viacom had done due to advertising revenues. Right. And, uh, that was uh, that was yeah. a major news story, right, Buzz? I'm sure you came across that. Absolutely. Not only that, but they also found out we went digital. So up, up, up. <laughs> yeah. All right, what can we do for you? You're the first on this phone scan. First call. Hey, I want to let you know there is a new king of all media. Yes. You didn't hear that? Oh, man, he's, he's conquered the radio. He's conquered TV. Mm -hmm. Now he's conquered the magazine. Jay Maynard is the new king of all media. <laughs> now, yeah, the Tron guy. Now you should yeah. know, Jay Maynard is the guy in the Tron suit. That's right. Who was, who, he had, as far as I can tell, two big moments of fame. Uh -huh. Right. He was on the Internet, then he was on our show, then he was on the Jimmy Kimmel show, <laughs> and then he's in Stuff then Magazine. Oh, and he, now he's in Stuff Magazine? Stuff Magazine. <laughs> Stuff Magazine, so he is the king of all media. He, he is on the Internet, so yeah, the king of all media. All right, thank you, my friend. Well, thank you, you saved yourself. I was just going to was a pretty darn good first was, call. Send right. you to the Lions. And, Mike, you mentioned a moment ago uh, that uh, I was lucky enough when we were bought by CBS uh, seven or eight years ago, I loaded up on the CBS stock because mm -hmm. they give us an option to. You mentioned that you 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 know you had somehow you lost your CBS stock. Yeah, well, I just and I, I sold it. I just mentioned uh, Jimmy Kimmel's name, mm -hmm. and here's a, an interesting story about James Kimmel. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that he's uh, working out a deal with his uh, wife. Oh, really? And Mike, you might feel good about this. Uh huh. Uh, she wants. Eighty-four thousand dollars a month. Uh huh. Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Your response to that is just uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She wants eighty-four grand a month. That's twenty-three thousand dollars a month for their two kids and sixty-one thousand dollars a month in spousal support mm -hmm. for James Kimmel. And uh, he is fighting this. Uh, no, he is not fighting this. He's he going along with it. He is going uh -huh. along with this. He's going along with this. I just wonder if you had a thought on that. It's very difficult for me to talk on certain things. I am um, 
I, uh, I do. I will tell you, as I've said on a serious note, since I can't think of anything funny to say, <laughs> that when you uh, when you have <laughs> when you have children in the equation, mm -hmm. it is a different circumstance. Yeah, I got yeah. what you're saying. It really is. I got what you. I mean, it actually doesn't. Uh, you know, the first failed situation that I had, I, I felt differently. I felt like I was. You know, throwing it away. Now I feel like it's going. Uh, it's going to my children's lifestyle, right. and that's uh, and you know, and and that is is well then fine. <laughs> well then fine. Eighty four grand a month. That's um. That's that's like way higher than like when you hear somebody like uh, you know Donald Trump money. Can you guess Jimmy Kimmel's salary? Oh, I'd love to know that. An accountant for his wife. Uh -huh. This is nice. Although th to be fair. The story that I saw in Entertainment Tonight said that they were having marital problems because he, he left her for... I hate that annoying actress. You know Sarah Silverman? Oh. You know the girl that was in uh, the Jack Black movie? Oh, what, no. The, um, the, uh, the one uh, with the Anthony Robbins in it, uh, where she was she was the School group. of Rock? Yeah, no, no, no. The, uh, yeah, no, she was in School of Rock. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Rock. I was getting that mixed up with Shallow Hell. Yeah, ah. she, was the she was the girlfriend of the guy that right. Jack Black lived with in School of Rock. Mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. he left his wife for her, so now she's making these demands. Jimmy Kimmel earns $2.5 million a year. Really? He does. Okay. Hello, Don and Mike show. Worth every penny, I say. That's all wrong. Jimmy Kimmel. Hello, Don and my show, James Kimmel. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello, I'm just calling. I've been meaning to call for a while, let you guys know. Um, I find all of your voices very nice, but I think Buzz is a very, very attractive voice. Mm -hmm. And I love listening yeah, cool. to Thank him you. tell the news. Used, yes, we're so. used to this. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy hearing yeah. Buzz tell the news. Yeah, it's so nice. I want to say, do. You really think it's you're so making nice. us feel better, like when you do that whole thing about <laughs> I like all your voices, but why don't you just cut right to the chase so you don't care about us and you care about Buzz? No, I care That's about okay. all you guys. We you can handle it. It's all right. We're big boys. Good. We're big boys. Listen, I I had something done today to, to, today to me that is much worse than this than this phone call. That's right. Now. I mean, once you've had a doctor yes. give you the prostate oh. exam, listen, you can take oh. your ego can handle it. I agree. Buzz is goddamn sexy. How do you like Thank her voice? Thank you so much. I do, huh? How do you, How do you guys like her voice? Uh, it sounds like anthrax. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, are you serious? No, that's not true. Yeah, it sounds like perhaps she's done a lot of gargling. No, it sounds like mustard gas. It doesn't sound like anthrax. <laughs> I think it's sweetly muffled as it dances across the page. Well, you know, hey, we're digressing here. Would you like to chat with your hero? Yes, I would. He's right here. I'd love to say hi. Hello, Buzz, would you hi. like to give her, Buzz, why don't you give her the whole treatment? Why don't you, why don't you give her the full treatment? Hey, baby. How hey, you doing? Buzz. <laughs> I'm doing great now that I hear your sexy voice. What, Thank you, Buzz. What's your name, beautiful? Yeah, now, now, that the, now that the cows have been put out to pasture, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you two a moment together. What, what was that name again, baby? Fa Fahima. Fahima. That's a very pretty name. Thank yeah, you, Buzz. Fahima. Very exciting name. What's your last name, Velveeta? Exotic name. Sorry? Fajita the Fajita. Fajita. I've heard that so much through high school and through college you wouldn't believe. But no, it's not Fajita. Don, Fajita. That's an exotic name. Fajita. Thank you. I'm a very exotic person. I bet you are. See how he works. Are you exotic me? like where you don't shave your underarms? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not exotic. Fahima, who's the celebrity you most resemble? Yes, please. A lot of people tell me that I look like Cam Cameron Diaz, but a brunette version, not a blonde, because I'm not blonde. Love brunette. So. The brunette oh, version of Cameron Diaz. Okay, listen, thank you. Say goodbye to say goodbye to the only person you really like on the show. I like all of you guys. No, I, I'm, sure. I'm serious. I like all of you guys. Sure, I you too. Buzz, show. you might as well give her, her, yeah, give her, yeah, give her what she wants, Buzz. Keep in touch for him. <laughs> thank you very much, don't, don't, I'll be calling again. Don't be a stranger, babe. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for being so nice. Yeah, whatever. I don't know if you heard him driving a convertible. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, I just uh, for the people that uh, provide Buzz with his temporary convertible. Yeah. <laughs> he wants it another week. <laughs> oh, okay. I imagine you look like a brunette Edgar Winter. <laughs> oh, my God, no. Oh, no. Anybody remember that? The album with Frankenstein on it. Uh, <laughs> I remember the album. I loved it. They only come out at night. Sure, great Winter album. Group, where you, <laughs> he was a strikingly handsome man. Yes, Edgar the Winter. albino Edgar Winter. Ed Winter. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Phone scan. Howdy. Oh, Hey, uh, have any of you gentlemen had the opportunity to watch the Trading Spouses show? I have uh, not. You mean That's My Mama or what? It is? The, the, the deal is ABC had a show called mm -hmm. Trading Moms. Fox or whatever the name was. Fox came back and stole the idea and it's like, 
This lady's my mommy. I Greeting spouses. I saw the promo the other night, and God bless Fox. They go right to lowest common denominator. Right. It's a takeoff on a British show, mm -hmm. and the Fox spin is that you find a white, middle-aged woman, uh -huh. and you put her in with a black family. Okay. And then you get the black uh, mom to live with the white family. Mm -hmm. And at least the clips that I saw had the white woman walking around the house with all the black kids going... I just want to say one thing. I can't stand rap music. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, so it's done totally Fox they style. They dumb it down as much as they humanly yeah. can. Yeah, um, they sure do. Uh, my wife, Carrie, watched it. And she said the best thing is that the woman they chose was a terminally perky southern lady. Oh. Good <laughs> heaven. No. All right, so you watch it, dude? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I got a kick out of it. In fact, it gave me an understanding of what you mean when you call Frida a snob. Oh really? Oh, oh, thank you. They were they were trying to. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for the compliment. She thank wanted you very much. to uh, go out the. Thank you, thank you. And the appreciate it. Telling her that not, you are super. You know, we save money for when we go out on weekends. As for picking up my wife's a snuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you right back at you, Pachango. Thank you for making my life just a bit better. Thank you. Thank no, you for mentioning you that. You, you totally understand what I mean because. She tried yeah. to get her head around the concept that they can't eat out except on the weekends. Right. And she thought about that for about 10 seconds. Is this I the perky eat. southern lady? Exactly. So the perky southern lady is also wealthy? Oh, tremendously. She's oh. married to a Japanese cosmetic surgeon. <laughs> oh, it this just gets better. better all the time. <laughs> now it's starting to sound like a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show, phone scan. Hello. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, we're doing very well, thank you. Uh, listen, uh, I tried to call a, a few weeks ago. I was listening to the NPR over the weekend, yeah. and I swear to God it was you guys. It Why? was due to do. <laughs> they didn't it, was have due to, it, it was due to do on NPR. Was it a real show called Jew to Jew? It was a real show. On NPR? The name, I didn't catch the name, yeah, but the it name was, was hilarious. I don't think the name was... Show. I don't think the name was Jew to Jew, though. No, it was, was a serious show, and it was hilarious. I don't think it was called Jew to Jew. No, but I probably think it was a couple of individuals who maybe sounded like this, who were talking, because isn't that the style yes. of, of speaking on NPR? Of course, it's... Uh, Mike, here's what it is. What is it? It's... Share the information. With it's a, if you're talking on NPR, mm -hmm. let's say it's all things considered. It's you're talking down to the audience. Of course, you. At the same, from... well, at the same time, you're keeping that golf tone to your voice. <laughs> you're uh, coming from a position of superiority, mm -hmm. and uh, indicating to your listening audience that they are somehow less uh, intellectually capable of understanding the subject material than you. You're listening to NPR. <laughs> Today we'll be talking about WMD. Now, does anyone listening know what that means? Of course not, because you're stupid people. You're listening to FM 88.2. It stands for Weapons of Mass Destruction. Right. Now, you might not know what mass destruction is, but suffice to say, a lot of people could die. Via... Weapons of Mass Destruction. Absolutely. Again, on NPR, all things considered, a topic today, WMD. And what does WMD stand for? We appreciate you listening. We will not have commercials because we're above it. Mm -hmm. We don't soil ourselves with advertiser dollars. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the show is not Jew to Jew. This uh, is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. We uh, we enjoy doing that just about as much as we enjoy doing anything. Not as much as we're going to enjoy the debut of Yallin FM. Because <laughs> 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 it, it, just in case you don't know, earlier I was telling you, one of the Infinity stations in in Atlanta changed mm. the format of the station, and they're calling it Dave FM. <laughs> and uh. this is a... A, a trend in radio, there's Bob FM, Jack FM, right. Max. We found out we're on a station called Max. Right. And we were thinking, what if there was a station called Allen? Yallen. Yallen FM. And it was like <laughs> Allen Line one. Right. It would be crazy because here's what it would be like. Rob, can you give me a touch of reverb? And if, uh, yeah, I think I can. Oh, real I can. fast? Yeah. All right, well, hold, we'll take a call while you're doing that. Uh, hello, Donna Mike Show. Phone scan. Hello. You are on the air. This is the Don and Mike radio show. You're on the air, and you're next. Go ahead, caller. Don and Mike. This line is wide open. Yes, thanks for collectively wasting ten seconds of our time. Oh, sorry, dude. dude. That's all right, dude. That's Mr. Dude to you. Mm -hmm. What can we do for you, dude? Don and Mike. 
your last team to arrive, I'm sorry to tell you, the limit is from the race. What? I didn't follow that. Oh, what a knucklehead. Yeah, it, what, what, damn, it was an amazing race bit. And it oh, was Christ. sucked, and he was too stupid to know that he was on the air. Okay, hold on. You got the reverb for us? Hold on. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Um, hello there, Don and Mike show. Hey, Mike. How about them news? Hey, oh, oh, oh. hey, I knew I was going to get one of those. You know, in the annual uh, Red Sox uh, bet, Mike is now 10 games. 10 games. And, 10 games out. Uh, you, you will be happy to know that all of the pundits, all of the experts, Don, are now saying, really, you know, they're very much in the wild card hunt, but right now it's 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 one of those great impossibilities that they could come back and win the division, so you know, even though, you know, stranger things have happened. Our bet is, mm -hmm. as brought to the table by Mike, that the Red Sox this year would win the AL East by at least two games. Right. Or mm -hmm. the loser has to give Tom Gavin a total massage while Tom is nude here in the studio, covered by only a towel. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be, uh, if they keep going the way they're going, they're going to go into this weekend series that I'm going to go see against the Yankees, yeah. and it's really going to be kind of irrelevant whether they sweep them or not. So yeah, remember, uh, remember back in April when, uh, when you thought up this, that you, you even went as far as, like, kneading his buttocks and, and also... Rubbing his feet, mm -hmm. rubbing his feet, and eating his buttocks, and uh, he, you know, I we will get the real massage table in here. You can almost smell the baby oil. <laughs> yeah. Can. Well, I, I hope that's always smells. Are you still working on getting us echo? No, I'm done. Oh, you got bring it. Bring it up. Bring it up right here. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Hi. This is Yallen. You're listening to Yallen. Oh, hold on. Can you can you get Mike reverb too? Yeah. Hello. You yeah. got it, Mike. Hello. This is Yallin FM. I'm Yallin Line One. It's the all commercial radio station. And this hour, we've tabulated your requests on Yallin FM. Here's your number one most requested commercial. Are you ready for your 2004 Major League Baseball All Star Game? The vote doesn't cast. That's Fox TV. Fantastic. You asked for it and we gave it to you. Now, you know, this is the only radio station in the country on Yallin that plays all commercials all the time. Welcome to Yallin FM. Hi, this is Yallin Line One. Have you ever wanted a radio station with 60 minutes of inventory every hour? Make sure you stay tuned. We will have an interview with Dr. Neil Clark Warren from eHarmony.com. But now a dedication to Bobby Hollingsworth in the accounting floor here on Yowlin FM. Being able to wake up every morning with Allison is kind of like having a sleepover with your best friend. I love my husband. We Breaking news on Yowlin FM. <laughs> Breaking news on Yowlin FM. We've just signed Dunkin' Donuts. Hello, my friend. It's me, your mind. I wanted to let you know that I don't really do afternoon so much. What a great commercial that was on Yallin. It's Yallin FM. All commercials, all the time. Now, make sure you stick around later this afternoon. It's our fabulous penny toss. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't love a good jingle? You've been calling 555 Yallin Penny. And this is the most popular commercial jingle of the day on Yallin FM. Letters to Johnny Carrabba and Damien Mantle. Yeah. Founders of Carrabba's Italian Grill. Sing it, boys. People will go to great lengths for great Italian food. Here's a letter we got from Matteo Well. Where's the jingle? I thought it's, don't they start off singing? Sometimes. Sometimes? No, no. Yes. Well, we'll have that for you. Don't forget, Monday, we're playing all the Outback Steakhouse commercials from 2000. <laughs> You're going to love it on Yallin FM. The freshness of your chicken. <laughs> it would have to be theme, a theme day. Yeah. And Saturday night on Yallin FM, it's all GM all the time. General Motors products. All of the commercials on Yallin FM, the station that plays all the commercials that you hear on all the other stations, but we play them all the time. No one even comes close. Carrabba's Chicken Marsala wins by like 900. That's a good one. <laughs> and don't forget, listen on Yallin FM. Carrabba's in Centerville. Exit 52. Don't forget, it's a special. Ruby Tuesday! <laughs> and here's the great thing about Yellen FM. When we break for commercials, you're not getting cheated. <laughs> Here on Yellen FM, it's another one from the Hall of Fame! The 
Chicago Underground Daily calls it an amazing cinematic wonder. That was a great one. Welcome back to Yellen FM. Hi, this is Yellen Line One. And I'm Yellen Line One. <laughs> We're playing all your favorite commercials all the time. It's the weekly commercial countdown. And don't forget, if you're a listener of Yellen and you'd like to be an advertiser, you can also be an entertainer. I'm yelling, I'm one. Now, a penny for your thoughts. <laughs> I'm yelling, FM. We owe Steve a present, but he's got everything. He doesn't have a star, a, a real star up in the sky. Let's, that's a great commercial on yelling, FM. Fantastic. I'll never forget that day when we closed that deal. Selling stars. <laughs> Sunday morning on yelling, FM. All the big ticket items. I'm talking about United. I'm talking about U.S. Airways. That's right. What radio show, what radio station has the airlines buying time? It's Yallin FM. Don't forget, coming up just after 6 o'clock on Yallin FM, it's the ABC Hour. Always be closing. <laughs> and now, a long-distance dedication. Are you listening? For the Goodman family on Yallin FM. <laughs> There it is, the most requested commercial of the hour on Yallin FM. Thank you for listening to Yallin and also patronizing our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, this is Yallin Line One. I'm the brainchild behind Yallin FM. For years, I ran a major market FM talk station and I said, isn't there a way, Mel, we could play more commercials? That's right. It was a brilliant idea, and it was adopted by the company. And now, Yallin FM is the only station in the country that doesn't trouble you with talk or music. We get right to the important part of a radio station, the commercials. And let's get right back to the spots. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. On Yallin FM, it's time for two in a row. Letters to Johnny Carrabba and Damian Mandola, founders of Carrabba's... Less music means more commercials <laughs> on Yellen FM. Hello, my friend. It's me, your mind. I wanted to let you know that I don't really do... <laughs> Hi, this is Yellen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's go back to our most requested commercial of the hour. Are you ready for your 2004 Major League Baseball? More commercials than any other station. Yallin FM. That's right. On Yallin FM, the content is the commercials. Hi, this is Yallin Line One. I had a unique idea for a radio station. All commercials, all the time. And now, finally, my dream has come true. I like doing this radio show almost as much as I like my favorite occupation. Selling time! <laughs> Now, back to the hits. Less rock. More commercials. On Yellen FM, the station everyone can agree on. Even the client. <laughs> Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. I don't know about you, but I never get tired of that one on Yellen FM. One of my favorites, but then again, they all are. <laughs> it's time for a Yellen FM long-distance dedication. This one's going out to... Yellen! I'm Yellen FM! Letters to Johnny Carrabba and Damian Mandola, <laughs> founders of Carrabba's... Time Italian for the commercial of the hour. Go to great lengths Can you guess what it is? I'm going to say it's that one about the All-Star Games. Let's find out. What's your favorite radio station? Yellen FM. Alright, let's get back to our Yellen FM question of the day. How's business? Could it be better? Give us a call. Coming out. Coming up, I should say. News about commercial. <laughs> Our love for you is overflowing. Our hearts begin to... Don't be fooled. This is not a song. It's a commercial. I hate those times when they don't get right to the cell. You're listening to Yallin FM. Here's another word from a great, great... Great client. Yelling at them. Yeah! Is he in the building? <laughs> I, th I hope he enjoys that. I hope he enjoys it. Let's join him. Let's join him. Yelling at them. Hi! 
Hi, welcome to Yell and FM. It's all commercials all the time. He must have stepped out. Probably on his sales call. <laughs> Hi, it's Yalan. Hi. <laughs> You're listening to Yalan FM. Hello, this is Alan. Hello. Infinity Broadcast, WJFK <laughs> Radio. I'm unavailable right now, so please leave your name, number, and a brief message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a nice day. I'll record your message at the tone. When you're finished, hang up or stay on the line for further options. Hi, Yallen. You're listening to Yallen FM. All commercials all the time. I'm Yallen. And I'm Yallen. It's Yallen FM. And this one's dedicated to you. It's the number one requested commercial of the day. Can you guess what it is, Yallen? I think it's the one about the All-Star Game. On Yallen FM. So what do you think, Alan? Yeah, that's our new radio format. Hold on, let me turn the echo off. Brilliant. What do you think? All commercials, all the time, Alan. You didn't get a chance to hear this, uh, Alan. We wanted you to hear it over the phone. So Bye. Hope, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Can we hear it? If you'd like to add to your message, enter one. I'd like to hear to it. To listen to it, two. I'd like to hear to the reverb. Record. Two. Hi, Yallen. You're listening to Yallen FM. All commercials all the time. I'm Yallen. And I'm Yallen. It's Yallen FM. And this one's dedicated to you. It's the number one requested commercial of the day. Can you guess what it is, Yallen? I think it's the one about the All-Star Day. On Yallen FM. Are you ready for your 2004 Major League? How pathetic are we? We're listening to this. We just did this. We're laughing at it. Yeah, yeah. It kind of sounds better on his machine. <laughs> yeah, that's our new radio format. Hold on, let me turn the echo off. Brilliant. And then what the do you think? And now oh. the, yeah, we can turn it off. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. <laughs> Poor old Alan. You know what? We were in the middle of a phone scan when we started doing oh. that. Let's, let's break it. We'll come back. We'll continue the phone scan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. All right. Be back. Yelling at them. <laughs> Stay tuned. Very soon, Goldie and Jim. <laughs> I'm yelling at them. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hi, Goldie. Have to think of the audience as a child that you're in charge of, and you have to do right by the child. And, and the child will ask for things that they shouldn't be given because it'll make them ultimately less happy. It'll be a better feeling for them. Yeah. They'll look back on this thing yeah. and have something that they experienced in their yeah. lives yeah. that didn't go to hell. Right, get that. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Pound sand, Jerry. They are the Dean's Peanuts, Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Right, right. Yes, we are. And, uh... Sounds like the call of a male gryphosaurus. It's uh, time for the phone scan. Continuing because we started it and then we didn't really finish it up. Um, Want to mention, in case you don't know, the secret sound contest is back. We're playing it once a day, and we're adding a hundred bucks every time. So now we play tomorrow. It's worth one, two, three, five. four. Five hundred dollars. Hey, finally get to five hundred dollars tomorrow with the uh, secret sound. I'd play it for you now, but I ain't got it here. I can do an impression of it. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, Very good. Phone scan. Thank you, Rob. Phone scan continues. Don and Mike show. Hello. 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 Don and Mike. Now, listen, I just want to say no pressure on you callers. We love <laughs> we love people calling, and we love unscripted, unscreened calls. We, we do. We've only got about ten minutes here because we're running late. We want to get to Buzz's news. But if the calls don't go good, I'd tell you exactly what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to go right back to Yallen FM. <laughs> right. Because we could just keep doing that. We could do that for three weeks. <laughs> All day. Yes, we could. So anyway, what can we do? What can we do for you? I need an honest answer from you guys. Yes. Is Beth and a MILF? You know, I would rather not, uh, for one time with somebody on the show, I'd rather not uh, refer to her, because she's a woman, as a piece of ass. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Okay, but, let's, but let's not, come on, let's not, right. let's not dwell on that, really, okay. please. Let's, let's bury that. Come on. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, did you happen to see a sign in my front yard that said Dead Ninja Storage? Did I happen to see a sign where? In my front yard that said Dead Ninja Storage. In your front yard? There's a sign in your front yard that says Dead Ninja Storage. Rob, what is he doing? 
What's he please, please, please mean? Joe Once Trump? again, another call that uh, we we're are getting, trying to understand. We're getting very close to Yallin FM again. Right. I, I speak idiot. Do you remember back on uh, say, Negro de Mayo when Mr. Forty was using the word ninja to, to substitute oh. for the N-word? And then what he's doing is that and putting it into oh, the... Oh, come on. Oh. You're a creep. Get off the phone. Yeah, you, you loser. Really, you big turd. Big turd head. Hello, Donna Mike show. Hi, my radio god. Hi there. I have been on the phone for 51 minutes. I love you guys so much. Thank you. We're just too popular. But thank you for waiting. <laughs> thank, thank, we appreciate the fact that you waited. May I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Was it worth the wait? It always is. Yeah. Uh, I, well, listen, what can we do for you? I have a talent later. I want you guys to use on the radio real quick. A talent? It's on-command talent. Yeah. Mm. And is it your ta it, it's your talent? Yes. Okay, what is it? You ready? Yeah. Well, now tell us what it is first. I know it in my yeah. Ah. We haven't had a good burp <laughs> talker in a long time. A classy oh, I can do songs lady. and everything. Oh, you can wow. sing? A classy yeah. lady. Oh, for do. God's sake, sing, sing something sing for us. Okay, I'll do Jingle Bells because it's easy. All right. Okay. All right, now here's another challenge, all right? Okay. <laughs> how about your how about your longest one? Okay, hold on, let me get some air. Gotta swallow some air. And you Wow. Oh, Impressive. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. You have won an Apple iPod. <laughs> BMW. Ah, you got an iPod. You're kidding me. No, that's a hell of a burp, honey. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> okay, say thank you in burp talk. Thank you very much, you guys. <laughs> you won the Apple iPod from BMW. Control freaks rejoice. BMW and Apple have created the first seamless integration of iPod and Ride. Go to iPodYourBMW.com. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, one more time, could we hear just that incredible, big, uh, iPod-winning belch? I so much. Uh, just give us one big swing. Okay. Just get, get the air in. You, know you, know, you know what I'm going to tell you to do also? Uh, uh, take the phone a little bit away from your Oh, face. am I too loud? Because it's too loud. It's so it's so powerful. It's too loud. <laughs> Hold the phone away. I want to hear it at a distance. Okay, here I go. Here we go, my lady. <laughs> Can you give us... Oh, she's still doing it. Right there. I can <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she's all you ever want. She's the kind I'd like to fault and take the beat. Give us another one. <laughs> she's got the... She's got the... And now one more real quick. One more quick. Come on. <laughs> she's a lady. She is. All right, hold on, honey. You and an iPod. That is <laughs> you are so one sexy. funny caller. Man, do we need that. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> I don't know if I can pee with that guy. Jeez. No, you, no, you cannot. No. You cannot. Don't try. Hey, but I had a question for you. Yeah. How come Yellen didn't play any commercials from Sona or Golfdom? Oh, those are the commercials that my fellow whores do? Yes. We'll yes. find those the next time. You know, that's and actually, that's a good angle the next time we do Yellen FM. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And now, here's a commercial by Mike O'Mara. So excited. And here's one by Rob. And here's one by Buzz. Where's Don's? Ah, uh, not in there. <laughs> not a whore. <laughs> I'm reminded every day. Hello, Don and Mike show. Phone scan. Hello. You guys are amazing. Yes, we are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Is that a, are we agreed to meeting over? Thank you. <laughs> Hello. I'm meeting over. Don and Mike show. Hey, I think you guys need to do, have another poker game. You know, it's been a long time since we've all played poker. Isn't that a winter sport, though? Yes, it yes. is. It is definitely not a warm weather activity. Wait, wait until football season like gets here. Stories. Yeah, but wait till football season gets here until we can all get together like on a Sunday when it's crappy outside. Yeah, what? Absolutely. You don't like the summer stories? <laughs> summer Hello. stories. It's not a fun show. Hello. <laughs> hey, Robbie. Yes. It's Karen. Can you play me in, please? Oh, yes. Oh, now it's a request from a lady. Oh, Karen. somebody who likes your Karen song. Come on now, Robbie. <laughs> Rob is wow. feverishly trying to get the uh, song for you, Karen. Well, I appreciate a little notice next time, Karen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are on screen now. There's no, and there's no, no telling who's going to call. Karen, Rob loves you. I do. What, I love him. What city are you calling from, Karen? I'm in a little place called Rancho Murrieta. It's Karen. She's a doll, she's a queen, she's a gentle as a teen, and Karen is her name. They call her girl. She's Karen. All right, bye, Karen. And you know what Karen Goodbye. misses, unfortunately, is Rob lip syncing that, that little Beach Boys harmony hook in the yeah. background. They call her Karen. 
Give that one to Don. She's a dog, she's a queen, she's a tantalizing teen. Hidden Karen is her name. They call it Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden Karen is her name. They call it Karen. <laughs> you are sick, Rob. He is. Hello, Don and Mike. He's back there uh, lip syncing all the words. They called her Karen. Turns around this big ass. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Right. Can I get a little re reverb? No. no, no. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> uh, show. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah. I mean, it's, no. it's one of those. If you gotta ask, yeah. the answer is no. Right. No. Hello. What's up? Uh, I hear your radio turned up. Come your radio's on. turned what up. What can we do for you? It's been a long time. Is this uh, Ryder? Yeah. Ryder! Is this the guy that was in the motorcycle accident? Yeah. Ryder. The car wreck. Car wreck. Right. And he, uh, he hurt his brain. Oh, he's not <laughs> retarded. Yeah. yeah. Right. How, how you doing, Ryder? I'm doing all right. Um, I'm done enough. I'm living. I'm in Virginia today. Uh huh. But um, I'm staying down in Asheville, North Carolina. I moved down there. Ah. You moved to North Carolina. Are you? Still, yeah. Are you still getting plenty of hot female action? No, no. I. I haven't been. Mm. Ryder, Ryder is a guy that we had on the show a couple of years ago. He was involved in a very bad car accident. Yes. And all he wanted was to meet someone and be friends with someone, right. you know, in, in that way that men and women are friends. Now, Ryder, was, uh, it was a pretty uh, bad wreck. Obviously, you can tell by uh, its effect of his speech. But when you see the guy, he doesn't look yeah. as though he's had any uh, any ill effects of the accident. No, sharp as a tack. And it was back when we did the TNA show. It was mm -hmm. like we had like a lap dance for him on the air. And, uh, Didn't we send him out to uh, a ranch? We, yeah, we sent him out to, to Nevada. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, for a great for a great weekend. And ever there. since we did that, he's always wanted to go back. Isn't that right, Ryder? <laughs> yeah. well, no. well, um, you see, yeah. it's like I kind of want to. I want to do the real thing. Yeah. yeah. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Uh, That's a joke, Ryder. That is a joke. Bye, bye Ryder. We got it. We got. It. We got to move. You know what's sad is you missed the iPod by two calls. Yes. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Yes, we are. Hi there. So great to hear your voices again. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm going to hell. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm calling from the middle of Jonesboro, Arkansas. So what the hell? What station are you hearing us on in Jonesboro, Arkansas? I'm hearing you online. Oh, hey, that's no. a secret it's shot. Impossible. Can't be done. I had, I had to turn that guy off. That's not possible. <laughs> it's a rumor. To listen online. Can't do that. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Donna Mike. Yes, hi. Hey, listen, I, I work for the federal prison, and she will be turned out. Now, you're, now we had a, we had a lady on earlier who worked uh, as an advisor from Federal Prison Consultants Incorporated. So you're talking about Martha Stewart? Oh yes. Even if yes. she's like in a minimum security deal, it, it, listen, they, they will turn her out. You just know, to gonna say, go. just to say that that they Never turned her out. They did it. They had some Martha All Stewart. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there's friend. comforting news for Martha. Thank you. Um, hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Don and Mike, how are hi. you guys today? We're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> up, up, up. Hold on. Last caller. That's you, last caller. What can we do for you? Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, there's a caller earlier called from Las Vegas. And he was concerned that we didn't pronounce Nevada right or didn't care whether you pronounce it Nevada or Nevada. He didn't care. We are happy it's Nevada, and this guy must be from California, probably right. Sacramento. Got right. you, my you got your message yeah. across. Uh, listen, you're the last person uh, hump on the phone scan, so you've, uh, <laughs> you've, you've won. You know what? What's what? Going on? Where did the hump went? You have won. Um, we we do we we don't have. We're out of hump prizes. Here's here's the thing. We got it. We got to write you an IOU. Oh yeah. Because we're out of network prizes right now. Unless see the thing is, unless I want to give this guy an iPod, I don't think he deserves that. No, well, maybe we no. Come up with, uh, maybe no, we and I'm not intelligent enough to operate it. Probably we either. Come up with a uh, with a new prize for him, like the Don and Mike pronunciation guy. We have a Don and Mike <laughs> prize pack ready to go for this guy. Oh, that's great. Courtesy of our fine sponsors. Yeah, Bethann, what do we what do we uh, what do we got for this load, Bethann? What do we got? The Don and Mike prize pack. What is that? It's a great prize pack that I'm going to put together as soon as you guys get out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. You got, thank you, my friend. Uh, thank you, guys. Hold on a second so you can talk to my friend Joe Ardinger. Uh, time for Buzz now. And uh, the news uh, tomorrow on the show, uh, that guy Ken Crockett, Tim Crockett, excuse me, who recently lost to uh, freaky uh, Ken Jennings. 
Jeopardy. The Jeopardy guy. A loser on Jeopardy. Yeah, and the guy that lost is bitter, and we're going to have him on the show. He'll be with us on uh, tomorrow's episode. Oh, and also, uh, tomorrow the Friday favorite. Hey. And uh, tomorrow we're going to really finally get in touch with at least one of these uh, radio guys from my past that keep leaving messages. Oh, good. Very good. The guy that I like and Buzz hates or, or George McFly. <laughs> and uh, please remind me at some point tomorrow, we got to talk about counseling Frank Herzog. Oh, really? Well, because... Well, we don't have time to get into it now. Poor Frank. He's a guy that's had three months that I wouldn't wish on. Uh, horrible. Anybody. My worst enemy. Absolutely horrible. He's a guy who had the job as the play-by-play -play voice of the Washington Redskins on the radio for like 20 years and got canned from that. And then two months later, Channel 9 axes him. Can't, he doesn't can't. renew his contract. He's still working there, but they, they didn't renew his contract. <laughs> so he's got to be feeling good about himself. Doesn't deserve uh, Frank, listen. There's always a uh, an empty shower stall for you here at the Don and Mike Show. Amen, Frank. Come on by, and Frank, we hope you use that to shower, not to hang yourself. Here Please you go. come by. Come by. Anyway, we will talk about the grave. And I do miss the, the real injustice that yeah. this guy has gotten from a lot of media types in this town. Pretty amazing uh, with his track record. It's uh, it's really nasty that they've done that to him. But anyway, that's that's uh, for tomorrow's show. He should go to work for Frank FM. <laughs> he, he should now, Buzz. Yes. Buzz. In a world where the only got radio there. was strictly forbidden, one man Focus. found a way to bring good news to his people. Focus on the show. It's me. He made it up. I gotta focus on the show because I could talk about Frank Herzog for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I won't. I'll do it. Do, do it tomorrow. You know what I tomorrow. think? Did it though. What? On the pancakes. Yeah. Who who else is gonna make pancakes on Friday mornings on Channel Nine now? Let me see, I like that. Yeah, me too. What? Tracy Neal. Tracy Neal. Buzz, Buzz, what is your lead story on the news and comments today? Thank you for your service to our country. Please enjoy your free breast enlargement. Yeah, baby. Baby. Wow. <laughs> you, you, what did you write down? I, I'm not. I, no. I won't read it. I no, promise. No, I, I'll show you. I, I promise break. on my kid's life. Uh, I won't read it. Will uh, you hold it up? I'm going to show you during the break. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> We're not going to go to break. No, no, you, you, you're going to make me. You're going to really frustrate me here. I want to show you during the break. No, Wait, won't you please yeah. show me now? Please, please, please. I promise I won't say it. Is it fun? Oh, now oh. you're back. Well, now we'll never go to now break. Now you ripped it up. Yeah. Now you ripped it up. You, yeah. You're, you're in a silly, silly mood today. I wouldn't read it. You're in a silly, silly mood today. I won't today. read it. Would you write you're, it down for you're, me? You're in a silly... No. Oh, he'll be really mad. <laughs> what, what is, did he write an off-color joke? We're making too big a deal of this right now. Did he write an off-color joke? No. What, what was it, then? It was something about you. No, it wasn't. Oh, God. It wasn't. So now look what you've done. You heartless bastard. <laughs> um, it wasn't. I'm being paranoid now. Stay tuned, Stay tuned. Stay tuned. For news Produce and comments, comments coming, coming up mm -hmm. on the Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike Show. That was very... Professional. Now, come on, tell me. I can't. Was it something about Alan? Uh, no. Yes, no, it was. I'm going to tell you during the break. I, I'm just, I, I, for whatever reason, I'm using my instincts right now. Okay, all right. But mm. I promise on my kid's life, I wouldn't say it. I won't even comment on what it is that you've written except to say it's either funny or not funny. All right, I'll do it. Okay. Oh, good. Don't fake me out and write something like, no. Hi, Don. Or something like, <laughs> Eat Sand. <laughs> that was. Oh, he thought it was funny. <laughs> I don't know why. Now, I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm, now, now I'm happy. You made now happy. I'm happy. Now, Mike, that's. <laughs> Thank you. See, Thank you. <laughs> now apologize to everybody. <laughs> I apologize. You, for you just not wasted going two down. minutes. I was bad. I would never say that. I, I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I apologize. You inspired My that. God. Yes, that's I know. Funny. Yeah. All right. That's funny. All right. Don't ever rip that up. I, <laughs> Wait a minute. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. The number one radio show in Haiti. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Proud of that. Don and Mike Show heard every day in Reno, Nevada. On the buzz. How about Sacramento? 1140 KHTK. Salt Lake City Call. K-A-L-L. And San Francisco, K-Y-C-Y. Buffalo, 92.9 WBUF. Baltimore, Live, 105. And Washington, D.C., 106.7 WJFK. Time now for Buzz. News and comment brought to you by Smoke Break. 
Smoke break. This is good smoke. Smokers break the nasty habit without gaining weight. Smoke break, a revolutionary tablet for smokers. Oh, and uh, also KIKK Houston, mm, yes. where we're on until the sun goes down. Smoke break available <laughs> now at fine retailers. Howdy. Here's Buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Well, for years, the military has dangled the carrot of a free college education. Lately, it's been promising video game technology and computer training. But this takes recruiting to a new level and gives new meaning to the word perk. Soldiers and their families are now being offered free plastic surgery, including breast enhancements, nose jobs, and liposuction. And quoting the Army's top plastic surgeon, anyone wearing a uniform is eligible. Free to the soldier with your generous tax dollars, the Army says this helps its surgeons in training practice their skills. <laughs> a couple of nights ago on one of the CS, MS, NB, Fox News, whatever it was, right. channel, they were doing a story on it. Right. And they had a, a couple of our fighting women mm -hmm. uh, who were in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. And now they're wearing their, their camouflage. They're wearing their right. cami. Right. So... I just heard. I heard the music too. Do you hear me? It's gone now, though. It's my um, telephone. I apologize. Ah, you and your crazy and, phone. And Rob was so helpful. He he took the phone away, went to the furthest corner of the studio, and was trying to cover it up. But unfortunately, that was mine. Anyway, there's a cami. Uh, the people wearing camouflage, and the one woman now because they're wearing army clothes. Right. It, it's not like they're out there in bustiers. Right. No. So th the woman says, "Well." I went from a 34A to a 34C since I've been in Baghdad. Oh, my God. <laughs> then another woman comes on. Is that Mike's phone again? I think so. That's me. I'm sorry. Was that a beep beep? stopped it. Yes, I'm sorry. Who's calling you during the show? I'm trying. Well, I'm keeping it on because I'm just getting a little update from my little ones to make sure that oh, they, they got, got a chance to meet the great Hillary Duff, and I'm just trying oh, to find good. out, so I brought it with me. Oh, well, go ahead. Take the call during I, I, the show. Well, I mean, I've, got a, I've got a message. I've got a message. Uh, uh, you want me to go ahead and take yeah, that take away? A, from? Yeah, go ahead and listen to it. I mean, I'm just here talking about... Uh, so they got another girl on mm -hmm. who said that she was originally a, I think, a 34B. Right. And she went to a 36 double D. Thanks to the Army. Since she was in, in Baghdad. And, oh, Mike is still That's mine. on his cell phone now trying to pick up the message to find out if his kids got to meet Hillary Duff tonight. Uh -huh. Anyway, their first concert. Anyway, the girl had big bosoms, right. but you couldn't really see them. And then in the camis. They, and then they got to the point where it looked like mash because then they showed uh, the, the operating room and they were saying, you know, uh, I, I guess it was kind of you know, on one on one hand, while they said, while we've had uh, almost a thousand uh, of our uh, guys and gals killed mm -hmm. over there, there's not a lot of them that are getting sewn up. So all of the doctors need to practice. Right. So there's all these flat-chested women that want augmentation, and furthermore. They're only doing augmentation. They're not doing reduction. Right. I, I just got the message. And? I have very, very good news. Uh, both of my daughters have been hired as dancers. Hey! <laughs> for, for Hillary, Hillary Duff. Duff. That's yeah, great. Yeah, they're a little young, but they're going to go on tour. Well, did they get in? Uh, they're in. They're in. And they got the armbands or whatever they need. And they're, oh, they're going to be you meeting, go. hopefully meeting her in just a few minutes. Hey! Super right. Dan! I feel... No, that's Super Bethan. Bethan, you rock. That's good, though. Yeah. That's really, really terrific. That's I'm very, yeah, you know how I get into that. You know, oh, I know. It's yeah. a pretty cool feeling when you can do something like that for Their your very first, first concert. Yeah, the very first concert. Yeah, it's about, all downhill from here. <laughs> yeah. And Batman, imagine the joy you'd feel if you did something like that for your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of going and buying another box of dog treats for your dog, <laughs> that can be very satisfying. <laughs> oh, and Beth Ann, I got. Oh, I have to ask him. This is embarrassing. <phone rings> About kids, it made me think mm -hmm. of this. Could, uh, Beth Ann has a daughter who. She went backstage a lot. What? She went backstage a lot. Yeah. She went backstage oh, she a lot. Got that right. experience. Hey, um, I just had to pretend I didn't know her because I was the talent. Uh, you know, don't I, come near me. I probably shouldn't be asking you this on the air, but what? when my kid called to talk to your kid uh -huh. the other day, because they are friends, uh -huh. and I'm supposed to say that they're just friends, okay. right? Yeah, uh -huh. Did you t did you tell your kid that my kid called? Did I tell Jennifer that Bart called? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, then she's blowing him off. I mean, that's that's. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm only. I'm only <laughs> hey, Howard. There you, oh, what are you doing, Rob? Hello. Oh, that was Rob pushed the button. Misfire. Um, because my kid said to me today, hey, Dad, did, did Beth Ann tell Jennifer that I... I said, how am I supposed to know? Yeah. I said, I'm sure that if she didn't tell her, she wrote, him, wrote her a note. And he, uh, he was kidding. He said something like she'd blown me off. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I don't no, know. no, 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 not okay. at all. She went out last night. She didn't get back to late. And she can be a little moody. Unlike really? the dog. <laughs> Unlike the dog. Mm -hmm. There you go again. Again. <laughs> it's true. 
Okay. And, you know, no, she thinks a lot of ours. She got them something, and I kind of ruined it for her. Well, I hope she didn't get him an early pregnancy test. <laughs> I mean, they are both they are both 19-year-old kids. This well, is what, weird. You would find this in the boudoir. Really? Mm -hmm. Something that your daughter got for my son? Uh -huh. She actually uh, went on to eBay and, you know, when they do those little, what do they do when you're like, you want to get that? With the auctions or whatever. Right. Oh, she bid on she bid on, on eBay. Yeah. Okay. Bid. Okay. I'll find out more about this. Wow. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Beth. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. <clears throat> she's incredibly overworked. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's she's such a great producer. She is so. But can she do. is. She is so can do. She is mm -hmm. so fragile. Right. And yeah. you know, oh. I'm the I'm the king of insecurity. She's the queen of insecurity. She's constantly walking around. That's why she fits right in. Is mm -hmm. everything okay? Hi. It's Dallas. <laughs> is everything okay? Oh, she's the best. Are yeah. you doing okay? Am I doing okay? <laughs> you know, she'll go home tonight yelling at her kid, why didn't you call Bart back? <laughs> <laughs> now he said there's something on the radio about it. <laughs> I was, I'm just uh, just thinking out loud because right. you were talking about your kids. Anyway, good for them seeing uh, Hillary. Duff. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll get an update in about, uh, I guess, about 15 minutes or so. I'll, I'll know what's going on. Very good. I was hoping that they they'd do that. I would hate for them to muff that up. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's very, I know you got into it. That would be a duff muff. <laughs> Eight. That's, That's what that duff muff. That's what that would be. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm glad they're going to enjoy the uh, the uh, concert. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. We can't, can we? No, we can't. We really can't. Say I can't it. We, we would have been. We would have done a half an hour. Uh, sure. On it in the old days. Do I talk about what you wrote down? Uh, no, I do. Hi, not. Buzz. Hi. 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 I I don't, Mike, don't worry. God. I know. Well, 20 years you don't trust me? I totally trust you. I told you, I, I swear on my kids. Yeah, oh, you know, that whole thing was not about trust at all. That was your, your little thing that you always, that you had a propensity for doing. You know that thing where you read what's One time you wrote something down dirty and I, and how many? Don, Don Burgundy, you know? <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. That's what that was about. Not, I'm not trust. That was one time 15 I, I, years ago. I'm not kidding about the time frame. Mike wrote something down and held it up. and I Just was like a little private joke. And, man, it was on the air. And we just had a little dancing. Funny. It was funny. It was funny. It was very funny. Don Burgundy. <laughs> That's funny. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Now, on the downside, aside from the free plastic surgery in the Army, there is, of course, on the downside, boot camp, combat, and food rations. <laughs> And the news about rations hasn't gotten any better since the Pentagon announced the new field rations that oh, can be rehydrated oh. with some very unpleasant liquids. Uh, think of the Kevin Costner movie, Water Wars. Oh, my God, really? The rations come dehydrated to make them lighter to carry, but sometimes drinkable water isn't available, like in deserts and swamps. Oh, my. So the new rations come with a filter so the food can be rehydrated with swamp water or urine. Wow. I wonder how it tastes. <laughs> Hi, nine, this is Sergeant Line One. Keep wondering. In order to save some water, <laughs> your MREs are now going to be, well, let me demonstrate. Right. I have some fluid to sell. All we offer is yellow squash. The 9-11 Commission report is out today, and it recommends some big changes in U.S. security, but it also tells the story of what happened at Washington, D.C.'s Dulles International Airport on the morning of September 11, 2001. Oh, God, this videotape is not too creepy. Four men who would be part of the five hijackers that day passed through security at Dulles even after setting off the metal detectors. Obviously, they each had utility knives called box cutters, which were legal at the time to bring on board. But the airlines had just gotten three warnings from the FAA about possible terrorist attacks. They let them through. Security people did screen the baggage of one hijacker to check oh, for traces hey, of explosives. You know, we live here, and let me tell you something. Prior to 9-11, oh. the security at Dulles Agreed. was absolutely still, insane. You don't see, you know, what, do you remember the jokes we used to make? And really, with mm -hmm. all, all due respect, there, were, there wasn't one single... American-born individual out at Dulles back there. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it was terrifying. And the, the the tape, the videotape, the surveillance tape is creepy because, you know, on one hand, okay, they got through with the bolt cutters and it was a different time and nobody knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, now you got a face with these guys. And you and it's creepy when you see them walking through the line and mm -hmm. being talked to. And, Mike, that's why I hate to go back in time, but at some point during the show today, there was a guy named Omar and he said his last name was Johnson. <laughs> and I just want to say, 
say, we are tracing that call. There you go. We're tracing that call. Omar Johnson. Omar Johnson who won a prize on today's show. Oh, that's a scary world. Robot. Anyway, that's a creepy tape. Now, fast forward to the present. From our Homeland Insecurity Department, yesterday, at one of America's busiest airports, a man wearing nothing but pajama bottoms got out onto the tarmac stole one of those luggage tractors and drove it onto an active runway. Joe. Hey, the ones with the trailers to carry your bags to and from the plane? Catch me if you can. Joe. <laughs> it happened in Atlanta. The guy went through a security door, but even though an alarm sounded, no security people answered the call. Mechanics escorted the guy off the field, and they say he seemed mentally unstable. Hey, hey Tom Hanks, I'm Barry Allen, <laughs> the Flash. Now I'm going to fly down to Georgia, and I'm going to marry Martin Sheen's daughter. These tractors are cool. <laughs> I'm Frank Evignail. Forget it. I'm halfway on my way through medical school. Catch me if you can. Republicans who pooed. What? Republicans poo pooed Fahrenheit 9 11 when the movie was first released. Poo poo. They said it would just be preaching to the choir and that it was a marginal movie. The movie has now made 94 million bucks in four weeks. 12 million people have seen it, and it's still showing at 2,000 theaters around the country, plus a barn not far from the president's ranch in Texas. <laughs> Yet when we went to send a Joe on a to Tuesday talk, to talk to people. Two people were in the theater for a 7 o'clock show on a Tuesday night. Right. Yeah, yeah but the, weren't there three people at Spider-Man or something like that? Yeah, and the other I theaters mean, were equally sparse yeah. yeah, at true. that time. I just think a picture. There were, there were eight people at Spider-Man? Eight people at Spider-Man. Yeah, but they poo-pooed it. <laughs> it's Joe FM! Okay, let's see if we can find out where the empty theaters are. It's all the stones all the time! Forget it! I'm halfway home! Hey, Tracy! Happy birthday, baby, on Joe FM! <laughs> Joe. You know, when one, one day when we were on vacation, <laughs> Rob was talking to me on the phone, and he says, have you heard Joe talking? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I, you know, I gave the okay, told Joe, open the mic a couple of times an hour. <laughs> he said, did you hear him today saying happy birthday, baby, to his girlfriend? Hey, baby, I heard that, too. Did I you hear that? Heard that. Yeah, yeah. It was a Hi, Joe. A little personal greeting from Joe. Just Arden. want to come in and wish my mom a happy birthday today, too. <laughs> is it your mom's birthday for real? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Is it really? How old is your mom today? You mind saying? Eight. How old? 68. 68. Do you mind uh, mentioning your mom's first name? What, what would? Uh, I'd rather not. Okay. All right. That's no problem. All right. Mom Ardinger. Anyway, her first name is Mommy. <laughs> Mommy Ardinger. Mommy, happy birthday. <laughs> Mommy Ardinger, your little baby boy just said happy birthday. There you go. Way to go, Joe. Joe Good Evans, job. another great format. Forget it, Mom. You got her flowers. I got your flowers. Happy birthday, Mom, baby. I'd sure not eat a cake you made. Well, about the movie, quoting a Republican... I'd hallucinate. <laughs> quoting a Republican consultant, I'm I've not... I've been grinding your pills into my cereal <laughs> during, during our morning visits together. And thus Joe FM was born. <laughs> quoting a Republican consultant about the movie, I'm not sure... Oh, Fahrenheit 9-11. Right, I'm not and, sure... And hold on, Buzz, we were goofing there. You're in... I know you made an important point. It's showing very near uh, Bush's Crawford Ranch. Yeah, uh, Michael Moore has secured a barn not far from Bush's <laughs> Ranch in Crawford, Texas, for a showing of yeah, the movie well, as that's well. Awesome. You know, that's a good part of that story. I'm sorry that we were uh, having fun there. <laughs> well, that's quite all right. That's I'm not why sorry we're... that we were that's having why fun. We're here. I'm sorry that we were having fun, and that's part of the story got <laughs> obscured. Because that was an important part of the story. So you're still talking about Fahrenheit, right? I am, and right. quoting a Republican consultant, I'm not sure if it moves voters, but if it moves 3 or 4%, it's a success. Two senior Republicans with ties to the White House say the movie's a headache because it's reached more than just Democrats. A new Gallup poll shows that 50% of Americans have either seen it or plan to. Wow. All right, hold yeah. on. We, we got a break. Hey, Ma! <laughs> Eat your birthday brownies. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ma! <laughs> Bet you can't eat just one. What's, what's, <laughs> ne what's next, Buzz, on the news and comments? Linda Ronstadt may be invited back to the Aladdin after all. Baby! Oh. Let's see her get into that bottle. Gee, <laughs> <laughs> bottle. That would have to be one hell of a big bottle. It's a super bottle. You have to rub that one an awful lot. Mm. More like a jug. Be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Gosh, I hate to interrupt. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hey, 
to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating. And? And entertaining and instructive. Really, really the time has just flown, flown by. by. It's on in my show. Oh, at like the Girl Scouts, they have changed. Don and Mike. Good heaven, no. We have. Here is uh, Buzz Gurley. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. When the president of the bankrupt Aladdin Casino tossed out Linda Ronstadt the other night, he swore she'd never be back. Not on his watch. A dude may need a new watch because one of the men about to buy the Aladdin Casino says he'd have Ronstadt back in a heartbeat. Planet Hollywood CEO Robert Earl says he and his management partners hope to take control of the Aladdin by September. Ronstadt was unceremoniously removed from the casino after she tried to dedicate a song to filmmaker Michael Moore. Rednecks then trashed the joint, which, according to the current management, had Linda putting a damper on the evening. Mm -hmm. The new part owner says he accepts Michael Moore's offer to return to the Aladdin with Ronstadt to sing America the Beautiful just before the you know, election. There, there's a guy, Dave Ross, on CBS Radio, and he does a commentary, and, and he, he, he brought up a good point, though. I mean, whatever your politics are. That's just not the place. I mean, that you know, that's not the forum for that. You know, it's and I and it really Vegas, he, baby. He was mm -hmm. talking about you know, he was talking about the truth, and he was joking about it, saying the truth. You're in Las Vegas, right? <laughs> Who cares? People just want to fly away in Vegas. And Michael go away. there for truth. And, and Michael Moore, really, you've already hit on the publicity bonanza <laughs> of all time. True. Stop piling on now by saying. I want to go back on stage with her and sing God Bless America. Well, he you know, was invited. You, but, know, you yeah. know what I want to see the two of them do? I want to see them go to one of those all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> That's Vegas, what I want to see. Yeah, the prime rib for $4.95. Yeah, That's the yeah. real reason they're going back. As many shrimps as you can eat for $1.99. <laughs> Stuff them into each other's mouths, oh, just like they're a married couple. There's okay. a movie. <laughs> Now, Bob Eubanks, on the other hand, still wants to beat the living daylights out of Michael Moore. This is about Roger and me? Uh, yes, it is. goes back to that. Uh, Moore once in that movie, in fact, used a clip of the former newlywed game host telling an offensive ethnic joke about AIDS. Frost be whack. <laughs> Eubanks says... I know, but you laugh. <laughs> I know, and I probably will again. Oh, dear. Eubanks says he heard the joke from a Jew and only told it because he thought Moore's camera was off and... Eubanks doesn't think it was offensive. And Trust me, it was. And here are the Jews. <laughs> anyway, Eubanks is... Hi, this is Yallin. <laughs> I'm here from Yallin FM. Bob Eubanks is made to look like the biggest ass in that movie. Well, he... Well, he told the joke. did it himself. And oh, by yeah. it. He did, you know, but here's the deal. Duh. Right. I thought the camera was off. He's in television. What a moron. There was... Eubanks says the incident cost him a job at CBS and forced him to apologize on Entertainment Tonight. Oh. <laughs> he should be glad he was on Entertainment Tonight. Yeah. I, I think if you want to apologize publicly, who better to apologize to than Perky Mary Hart? <laughs> Eubanks says he's no longer angry with more really, but he says they'd better never meet in a public restroom. <laughs> oh, Whatever that, that means. means. Hey, what does that, that mean? Meet in a public restroom? Mr. Eubanks. That sounds like, sounds like uh, he's, he wants to give him the exam I got today. Oh, yeah. You know, the idea of giving Michael Moore that exam. That, can you imagine that? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of the, one of the men... Go your shoulder. <laughs> one of the men seen throwing, kicking, and stomping chickens in a Hold on, where's my wedding ring? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm not going back to get it. One of the men seen throwing, kicking, and stomping chickens at a poultry plant for KFC has been suspended without pay. Three of his co-workers also being investigated. The head of the Pilgrim's Pride plant that kills chickens for KFC says he's ordered the managers on every shift to educate their workers about animal abuse. O.B. Gooseby says there's a zero-tolerance policy for that. And he says all workers will have to sign an affidavit saying they understand the policy. Obi Goosby? Uh, Goosby. I want to tell you. Goosby. I want to tell you. You treat the chickens well before you cut their heads off. Right. Hey, do you know Omar Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's being traced by the Don and Mike show. <laughs> <laughs> now, PETA, which got and released the video of the chicken abuse, is not all that satisfied. It wants the chicken kickers prosecuted, and its boycott of KFC continues. I eat a lot of chicken, says Barry Hayden of Central Ohio, but yeah. Barry says he may cut back after his family found a glove inside their six-pound bag of Tyson frozen chicken breast. Quoting Barry, it looked like one of those gloves you'd wear in a freezer. <laughs> Tyson's told him to send the chicken and the glove, promising to double his money back and throw in some coupons for more Tyson chicken. Yum, yum, yum. But agriculture officials are also looking into it. Is your doctor missing a glove? <laughs> <laughs> no, just a ring. Oh, okay. I'm having chicken tonight. In sports... <laughs> 
Oh. We're, we're close. He went gloveless. <laughs> oh, God. A player's been, just for you, a player's been banned from a women's golf tournament in Fort Wayne, Indiana, because her birth certificate says she was born a male. I want to play. But Danielle Swope, a transsexual, says, quote, I have no man stuff at all. I'm a fully functioning female. And what did Sue Powell have to say? <laughs> I, I want to play the tournament. I really do. Ah, oh, look at that shot. Bite! And finally... <laughs> If you think your last trip to the dentist was rough, in New Zealand, a dentist is being investigated after a patient complained he pulled 14 of her teeth when he was only supposed to pull four for a bridge. <laughs> well, he, her face is now covered with bruises. He now faces charges. The dentist says he misheard his assistant and has apologized without reservations. Mm -hmm. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. No! Yes, Mike, no. that's, that's it. <laughs> Gotta go. Uh, let's see. Thank you to. Uh, oh, I gotta thank BMW for the Apple iPods we've given away all yeah. this week. So go to iPod, your uh, BMW.com. Thanks to Cindy Gardner from Federal Prison Consultants Incorporated, mm -hmm. telling us today about Martha Stewart going to jail. Tomorrow, the guy who's a Lewis loser on Jeopardy, to the freaky Ken Jennings, and uh, all of the other stuff that we didn't get to on WJFK FM, Live 105 FM, and uh, 10 Times the Buzz in Tampa Bay. Please stay tuned for Ron and Fed. Yeah. Everybody else, I'm sure it's a block of whatever is coming up next. Get the let out or whatever. A uh, good day to you, sir. 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 And you. Good night, Omar. <laughs> yeah, I got you, Omar. Omar Johnson. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. Right. Why not Omar Smith? Omar. That's it. We'll see you uh, tomorrow with the new episode, okay? Trim your nails. Huh? Do we meet again? This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.